Good day. Howdy. Hey, okay, so I have been playing around with Chiefs, and I am hitting the contract size limit again, which is great, because this time, I mean, I can do another refactor and try to move some stuff into a contract is really the only thing I, or to move stuff into a library is really the only thing I need to do, know to do other than eventually to upgrade to the diamond standard. Which should take care of. I this guess if problem. you're just trying to get within the. Oh, you think that? Yeah, we can do that if you want. If the diamond standard isn't going to change, I'm not. Anytime I soon. don't know it well enough. There's actually I posted in the Builder's Dungeon. There is a call tomorrow by GeoWeb, who is a, they're, they're an augmented reality Web three, whatever. But they um. They're, they're going over their new contracts, which happen to be diamond standard contracts. So maybe I'll watch that presentation and get an idea of how to do it. I really don't know how it works yet. Uh, if that case, maybe it's just a different set of solidity um, contracts, right? I mean, you know, I think you know. Yes. I don't know exactly how. I know that. Just more optimized. I mean, even this guy I work with in Lex Dow, he's like, there's this new thing that he's working with. Oh, I can't remember the name right now. But it's these super shortened smart contracts where they took like the best of Open Zeppelin and their whole purpose was to, to make them so small. But I don't want to go down that road either because then we would be rewriting the whole smart contract. I think what we want to do right now, because we're kind of near the end, why don't we just go into the contract? Even if we just shorten like variable names and functions and stuff, that might get us under the limit. Yeah, I mean, I'm under the limit now. I'm trying to add the per user limit. So that there's a limit per user as to how many can be minted. And I don't know yet if that's going to push me over or not. Um, well, if you're that close, may, let's just make one more library. Well, let me push up what I've got and we'll see okay. where we're at. Um, here, hang on. I'll share my screen for just a minute and then uh, so you can see what okay. I'm working on. Cause I've got to, I've got to look over what I've done before I can. Yeah, let me watch your screen. And for whatever reason, I don't understand really why it is rebuilding the the contracts. Oh, I guess that's because I compile. So when I'm running the test, I'm still recompiling the the contracts. And so it's I'm seeing the the artifacts updated for the code. contracts are updated. And I assume that that's because I am, uh, they're getting updated when I compile to run the tests, I guess. I wouldn't expect them to be in the Mumbai directory. I would expect them to be in like a local host or a. Yeah, that Mumbai thing is kind of strange. But I am not going to worry about it. Currently, because it's not changing, I don't think. Right. So, so really, what that if we went and and bug hunt that that could say mainnet or polygon. It's because yeah. that's where we're deploying it to. So that's really just a that's just but a I holding spot redeployed. right now. It's just throwing it's, you off. Cause... I haven't redeployed. I've run the tests and the tests recompiled the contracts, but. They didn't. I didn't. Re, I didn't deploy to any network, other than the local mm. hard hat network, just to run the tests. But I'm not going to worry about it right now. I think it's fine. I don't think it breaks anything. Um, let me see what else I changed. Because I did. I found a problem with how the metadata was loading that was causing that self mint the last one well no i added that i haven't actually tested that yet i was in the i was changing the contract to get it to the point that that was working 
Well, we can do it from my side if, if you're going to have me pull it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. Yeah, just let me read through this real quick. Yeah, because apparently Lux is not actually going to use our site at all. He's just going to call the contract, which makes sense. Well, that's kind of what I want to do in the material UI. But you and I need to have a discussion about that because there's more to it. What I'm trying to do in my admin dashboard. Mm -hmm. It's like a part of it is is minting these tokens. But another one of it is just querying the blockchain. Um, and we might want to use just GraphQL on it. But at least I want to t tell you more specifically what I'm trying to do. Okay. And so where's he integrating that? Is he putting that in meta builders and meta game? Or you don't even know. He's just going to private he label is, it whatever way so he sees you, fit. Have you seen the onboarding um, thing where it, the, it, like, t it looks like you're typing with somebody? Yes, it's when, like when Pete announced it, I went through the I went through the demo, but I haven't seen it since then. And but I know Lux is working on it. His most recent version, after you go to enough pages in that demo, it pops up a little screen saying you have earned an NFT, and uh, clear and the transition. Say or it again. It's all proxy and up. it just oh. Um, then does it have them run a transaction or it's just in the background and it airdrops something into their address? So it actually, it has to run a transaction because somebody has to pay for the the token. And, and so, he's putting that back on the user. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's how he's got it currently. And I would like to investigate having um, like I, because I don't know that much about how if a contract has gas, or if a contract mm -hmm. has a, has a token, if it can pay its own gas. I mean, surely it can. I just it can. Have, yeah, no problem. But it just that. gets civil attacked immediately. Yeah. No, that's the problem yep. with. Um, the, well, we're uh, gonna work around that. It's like I, I've, I've been thinking about that for two, two and a half years when I did Swag OX. It's like that's what we we would pay to do the transaction for people to get their token, but, but it could be accepted very easily. So there's a ways around it, which just means that you just kind of have to vet the people first before you're willing to pay for the gas to drop a token. Well, and what that mechanism looks like, I, I'm not sure, but we have to figure out something that's reasonable. In metagame, it was really easy because you could just whitelist everybody that was like on a player's list that they at least had to take some sort of formal movement forward. Yeah. And for me, that's enough. If you step forward and you're like, I'm part of this club, and everybody goes, well, yeah, kind of, you're still a non, but I've heard your voice and I guess you're okay. It's hard to sibble that a thousand times because you'd have to change your voice a thousand times. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, that the we we don't need to worry too much about Sybils on the at, at that level of individual users. Um, but the thing is, is with his current setup for this, it's called a deep dive NFT that he's minting when someone goes to enough pages in the onboarding game. Yeah, that that's cool. One, the minting the way that he plans on implementing it is to disable the minting check. So anyone can mint. And then I, on the, the opposite side of that is that you shouldn't be able to abuse that either. So you'd have to go to a different address. So that address kind of becomes burned for a certain amount of time or blacklisted until a certain amount of time has gone by or something like that. Well, for this one, I was planning on having it be just one use. They have one use. Yeah, they can mint once per address because that's this NFT doesn't really isn't really repeatable. It doesn't make sense as a as a, rep, a repetition. And then, then I think that's cool. But there, as you know, there's plenty of ways for us to do it. Me, I'm just trying to do path of least resistance so we can get something close enough where we can move on to other cool things that we want to be involved in. Because your plate's going to get real busy just with ceramic updating you know some source cred stuff that there's there's genuine interest over that has shit in be duty war system so there was a call today about card name it was like well i know a little lot of people from a source cred. like yeah hey, put that on the agenda hang on so i'm gonna see if i can I reduce the 
the uh, band. Did you get the I'm having Aaron? a hell of a time. You're breaking up quite a bit. Let me see if I can reduce my resolution and have it not uh, gray out like it is. Or yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, try talking again. Check one, two. Talk you said now. you you said you had a coordinate call. Um, with Lex Dow because okay. they're starting to form like active working groups, and you know, of course, the conversation comes up about payment and how everybody compensates, and so I interjected source cred into the conversation, and so what I was saying to you is you're going to be getting really busy soon because there's a lot of things that I know you're working on that are kind of coming to fruition in the next three months or so. So that's why I want to move off of achievements as soon as possible. Um, so we can look at some of those other things while we roll to the end of the year. Yeah. And the upgrade to a diamond standard would be, I mean, that's a significant amount of work. I don't know how much work. I don't know. I don't know. I've never. I, it's probably I've not never... worth it at this point, though, to be honest, because this contract that you have is pretty big, and I don't think yeah. most ones that we're going to move forward with are going to be anything like this. Because where I think we're going here is more, sort of like, not single use functionality, but much more direct to the point, not like an entire system like this. The achievements with a, you know all, all the different roles that's pretty sophisticated. Mm -hmm. So it takes up a lot of lines of code. Anyway, you want the diamond standard like most that I was like be a good reason to do so, and this at this is not enough. I don't need well, band I see stuff. God, you're still breaking up. Uh, let me just stop sharing my screen. Uh, so I am interested in the diamond standard in large part because of just to understand how solidity works better yeah don't really... share your screen just do what you need to do so you can pass it over to it's it's regenerating right now but it sounded like yeah you even like sped up in time so i think i can hear you fine now okay um i was just saying that can i, I pull I are you still to, doing something i want to understand i'm pushing i'm just about to push i'm committing is what i'm doing I think the whole point I'm trying to is I, I view how we're going to just do stuff. We need to get this Chiefs thing kind of locked in so we don't revisit to of the fourth quarter. Rolling, rolling into the new year with it being completely finalized, but in the meantime, feeling that it's good enough. deploying a brand new clean smart contract and kind of like managing the tokens yeah. that get minted on it so try to uh, pull for chiefs Okay, run. I think you can run. Well, let's try something real quick. Let's try to add a function and see if it pushes us over the contract limit. I think it might, but we'll see. So edit the contract. Packages, contracts, source. Search for set max. Yeah. 
go on down search for where it's actually defined there we go um on line copy line 741 through 747 Paste them on, well, yeah, don't paste them there. Paste them on line seven. Paste them after the second set max. See how there's an underscore set max? Paste them after that. And do set per user max. Change the name to function set per user max. No, change the, the function name. So line, yeah, 768. And let's, for right now, Copy line 760 and 761. Are you okay with me changing that variable to the underscore? Well, go ahead and just, just copy 760 and 761. Okay, I took it out. Yeah, either way, I'm going to replace that line, actually. Just replace line 769 with those two lines. Um, do change the word indent line 769 change max on that line in quotes there's quote max no up above it the line above it yeah to per space user space max the one in quotes, the one on line 769. Okay. Add, copy that um, 764 through 771. Yeah, just paste it in place. Um, so, on line... It should be the bottom three, in, but they should just be indented one space. It's fine. Like, I mean, it's not a big deal, but ideally those do just one hit the space bar, hit a back, do backspace and hit just the space bar. I think I have to do the whole thing though. The whole contract. We'll just do that. Just well, don't worry. Don't worry about that. Feel, huh? Don't worry about the other ones. They should be like that. I don't okay. know if they've been, if it's been reformatted or something. No, when I, when I pasted it in, it, it assumed because yeah. I think it's still there on your old ones. Yeah. We were dicking around with these. But, yeah, we don't need to do that now. It's not important. Um, so, so for line 768, change set to get. Remove the comma in 64 max. Online 768, comma, int 64 max. Remove that. Okay. After public, put returns. Okay. 
And I've been considering how I want to do this. The problem currently, or at least the, the pain point with the way the maximum is configured currently is if the, it, it is by default zero, which means that it has to be set in order for it to have an effect. Or otherwise, otherwise it'll be zero and you won't be able to set it because the it'll say you're over the maximum if the maximum is zero. What I would like is for the default value, I think that for the per user max, if it is zero, I want to treat it as though it is unlimited. I think I want it, and it's kind of it's kind of iffy to have the max and the per user max have different behaviors. But at the same time, I really don't want them to have to set the per user max every time they mint a new token. But on the flip side, do, do you think that it gives two, if the default is unlimited, there's a chance that somebody's going to screw up and do something they shouldn't have. And now they've given somebody unlimited minting access. Well, to me, all... it would be like the default is like no. The default is one, maybe zero is probably better. But you're saying it's hard to do the math on that. So the default is always you get to do one, but but then you have no way to get to the maximum, I guess, unless you want to do a well. No, know, I mean they always say. they're going to have to set the maximum total, so that will be set regardless. And this is just how many each user. I mean, we could have it be the fault one. That when we mint, we could set the per user max when we mint, or when we not when we create when we create the token, we can set the per user max. I like that. To it one. feels when okay. You're, no, when I you're agree. In that's, the zone, that's, that I'm, should be yeah, fine. Okay. So do okay. returns. And then space open paren. Um, and this is going to be. I need to look. I need to. Um. So then do int two fifty int or do int sixty four, max. And on line 770, do max equals rather than equals max. Remove the equals max and change it to max equals. Yeah, remove equals max. Because we're no longer assigning a value that we're passing in. We're passing a value out. But you need max equals to be at the beginning of the line. Before int values. Nope. Before int values on line 770. And the semicolon at the end. Yeah. Run yarn hh colon test and see if we're over the... Oh, what's it say? Um, do... Typecast it to int 64. So do a... Or we could just do an int 256, honestly. I don't know why not. I mean, we can just, we can change the return type to int 256. So on line 768, where it says int 64, change that to int 256. And you can remove the typecast from line 770. So yeah, on yarn hh colon test and see if we're over the limit. You're okay with warnings for now. What's the warning? Function state mutability. Um, Can yeah, but view. on line seven sixty eight, add space view after public.
Okay. So, so will yarn HH colon test? Does it say that the contract's too big? Yeah, it went over. Uh, go back into you want the. Want me to con just pull a document out? Okay. No, go into the. Do you, you you know. Okay. I I don't know the exact way to fix this. Um, I don't know the quickest way to fix this. Um. Gosh, I see. The problem is I don't know which of these methods I've used. Some of them are overrides of the methods with the same name and different arguments. And so I don't have to have all of them. Um, but at the same time, that's what I really want to do is move that stuff. The role stuff, the role, mentor, role. That might be enough right there. Um, that might be enough there. The problem is, is I don't know. I We tried to move that to a library before and it didn't behave well. We could try real quick and see if it works. And if it doesn't work, then I'll, I'll mess with this some more. I'll not make you sit through me figuring it out. Uh, go up to the top. So, go to the end of the library that is bits. Comment out the hard hat console line and see if that has any effect. The line 12. Will it compile now? Just I don't think it will. No. So do, hang on, stop, on line 117, do library, I guess, roles, capital roles. Space, open, per open brace. New line. So then um, scroll down to where the role definitions are. There you go. Hang on. Stop. Stop. Go up. You need the role enum as well, which is starts above where you're at. Yeah. Yeah, so starting at 153. Go from 153 and then get the two functions that are after the enum as well. So there's an enum and there's two functions that operate on the enum. You're you breaking up. function, potentially. Go ahead. Say it again. I think gonna work for code break. This is space. It's getting back. I'm still. I I got code break. Getting back is all that I heard from what you said. Forget about it. Okay. Uh, so paste that into the roles library that you just created in that. No, in that. Yeah, line 119-ish. Okay. I have no idea how this is going to work. Um, 
scroll down just a little bit more. See, now wherever role appears in the main contract, it should be messed up. Yeah. If you do roles.role for that, does it work? On line 309? Roles.role. Capital. Roles. Capital. Role. Capital. Role. Capital. Roles. And Capital. Role. Both. Nope. Roles.role. So the first one is plural. It's the library name. Isn't it? The library is named Roles. That's what I had. So Capital. That's role. Capital. Role. After it. The enum is also capitalized. Nope, not the variable name, the enum name. Yeah. Doesn't like that, does it? Uh, hover over it. What does it say? Identifier not found or not unique. Hmm. Um. Can you put public between enum and role? Does it have any effect if you put public in there? I've never seen that, but maybe. I don't think it likes that. I don't think it's going to like that, but you can try. I just don't know why it wouldn't be able to see that role. I think it went away. Well... That's weird. Because it's not defined. That library is not defined. Oh, no. It's still, it's giving me an underline here. Okay, hang on. Wait. Public functions are part of the contract. The information code for public state variables. Make sure to authenticate. Maybe this is private. No. Oh. Expected identifier we got public. Um, hey, let me read this one more time. Public functions are part of the contract interface and can either be called internally or via messages. Um, yeah, remove public. Put public before enum just to make sure that it doesn't work. No. Okay, I guess it's just enum. Hang on, hover over it again. What was the error that time? Oh, it's the same thing. It's never mind. Um See, that should be fine because that's in the library where the Enum is defined. So that makes sense. Um, search for role real quick. It completely fell off. Search for role. And get out, get out of this library. Go beyond this library and see where in the contract where role appears. There we go. There's roles. There's... That's what I don't understand is why roles.role doesn't work. Do you mind asking Google for Solidity Enum in library? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Hang on, wait. I see, I see the pro I see what will be a problem. Um line two sixty. That variable named roles is going to, it'll say it's shadow. It's sh because it shadows the library name. It's overriding the library name. Um, can you change that variable name to like, yes, anything other than just roles? What does it do? It's only there because of the upgradable contracts. I had it in there when I was trying to do 
um, a listing and I can't remove it because of the way the upgradable I'll just leave proxy, it as proxy. That see Let's if it well proxy. try running yarn hh colon test now and see if it complains about that. It might complain. Well, it's probably going to complain about the roll enum as well. Yeah, do a. I would just do a find and replace on roll and replace it with rolls dot roll. Maybe um. What. No, we gonna march through them one no, by one. Yeah, it's, that's okay. the thing. Like, because you don't want to do grant roll. Um, you could do space. I think you could safely yeah, roll do space. Well, now we're down to thirty. So let me just go ahead. Well, I was gonna say you could do space roll space. Okay, now we're down to twenty-three. The match case. 14. That's probably good. Let's see. You might scroll through them real quick and let's see if. It's going to get that one. We will have to change that one back because there's nothing. There's no way to really avoid that. Um, uh, We don't want to get that one either. Yeah, just skip over that one. I think you're going to have to. I think you are going to have to one at a time. So do replace that one. Is it on 366? Replace 366. Yeah. Um, hang on. You're replacing space roll space with just rolls dot roll. You need to have spaces around rolls dot roll. Uh, you know what? It's getting it came. Yeah. I mean, I, let me control Z that last one. Yeah, you need to put spaces around it. So a space before, yeah. Okay, let's try it again. Okay. Not that one. No. Nope. Not that one, nope. not that one. That one, yes. 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 That one, yes. Yeah. That one, yes. Yes. Mm. Yes. 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 No. Nope. Yep. Yeah, that one. that one. All all each one of these. That one no. Yes, that's uh that's just an array of that roles. So it should be of that enum type. That one as well. Okay. 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 Search for just um you need to replace roll a couple other places. If you run yarn HH test, it'll tell you one by one where the errors are. Or it might tell you all the errors at once, maybe. I think it's just going to pick the first one, though. We missed one? 323? No, it doesn't start with a space. So it's, yeah, that one. Are they underlined in red? Is there a, can you? This one is. Okay, well, look for other underlines in red in the code. Yeah, there's another one. Okay, 665 and 666.
here too. Yeah. Makes sense that this should work, but I think that when we tried this before, it was it didn't work right. I don't know. I don't remember what the problem was. Yeah, line seven ninety seven. Okay. Come on. Yeah. Run yarn HH colon node. Colon. And run the test in a different window. Because I would expect this to break pretty much everything. Yeah. Because, so, type S and hit enter. Yeah, see, you have those. Um, I got them in Polygon. Yeah, it, but when it recompiles, I'm just saying when it recompiles, it does that. Um, that rolls.json is where the ABI of the, yeah, you could look at it real quick, but it should be the ABI for that library. Okay, so, um, huh. my problem is, we somehow managed before Um. See how there's a bits dot address. Uh, like if you look at the the um in the artifacts directory, there's a bits dot address and a bulk dispersible NFTs dot address. If you scroll down, go 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 down a little bit further, just a little bit further. Yeah, there you go. It's it's just after the it's above Rinkaby. Bits dot address and bulk. We don't have a dot address for that library for the. The roles live. Oh, so we'd have to deploy it. Well, I think it's getting built. Run, try run yarn hh colon deploy and see. If it can find it, if it's smart enough to do it. Oh, man. I hate to do. Hang on. Well. Yeah, I'm going to do it and assume we can fix it. If nothing else, we can roll it back. Yeah, 
Yeah, see, that's it. In order to have... Well, you know what? I'm cool. It's time, it's time to redeploy one, a clean one anyway, isn't it? Isn't it? We are pretty close to that point. I was just deciding whether or not to... Um, do a um, yeah, I mean, I was going to do the diamond contract, but I can wait and do that. I can do another redeployment after. So go into the contract. Yeah, because that takes the pressure off you, too. You can do that as a side hobby opposed to something that, you know, we're kind of, Lux is waiting on or something. Yeah. Um, sure then, go into the contract. Remove, scroll down. There's two lines that say remove this line on them. They're in the actual contract. After the libraries in the contract. Yeah, so remove You two, want me to... Um, yeah, remove that You want one. to re remove it or just... Yeah. Okay. And remove 262. Oops. That's fine. Yeah, I wanted to remove it. Oh, 260 also. Okay. I thought, oh, yeah, 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 as well. Interpreted literally. Yeah. Okay. Um... Hmm. You want me to slowly scroll through it? No, I mean we to can see try if anything to, rings a bell that you wanted to do. Redeploy it. You can cool with all your comments and stuff. Yeah, I think everything's reasonably close to sensical. Okay. Um so do an RM dash R artifacts polygon or get RM. So get RM dash R packages contracts. Artifacts. Well, I'm glad that that didn't work. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Whoops. Yeah, you were a little, a little overzealous. Um, <laughs> um, well, I mean, Contract we can always UI. do a reset. We can do a oh. get reset and it would go back, but yeah, we... Um, no, polygon. Instead of source, polygon. It's going to hit it do and it's going to complain that there are changes. What you could do... Oh, artifacts. You need artifacts before Polygon. You should be able to tab complete this stuff. Um, type... Let's just go ahead and commit it and and say so that everything's saved. Um, do a. You don't want to do a force removal first, right? Okay. No, let's just let's commit it and committing it will have the same basic effect. Um, so T space moving roles to library. Uh, do a ha, do a control A control K. K A A and hit enter. Control Y. Okay, yeah, that should be fine. Now do your R M dash R. You would want the 
dash F in there now to force it? It shouldn't. You shouldn't have to force it because you just committed your changes. Oh, okay. That's what Git does. Just checking for those. Okay. Um. So. Yarn HH colon deploy should create a new contract. <laughs> Wiping all everything away. Well, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't wipe anything away. The other one is still. Yeah, I mean, we could always good, revert no? back yeah, I mean, to the old yeah. contract address and redeploy. Take a look at all the old it. tokens and everything. Yeah. Okay, what's okay, it say? Artifact for a contract. Console dot soul colon console dot um, Artifact for contract. Remove do L, type ls packages contract. I think there's like a no slash. I think there's a, a cache directory in there. Yeah, do a rm dash r packages contracts cache. Contracts cache. That look right? Nope. Contracts. Packages yeah. contracts. Not, no packages. Okay. No packages contracts yeah. cache. You should be able to tab complete Pack in general. Cashes. A few times it didn't work today, but not pack cat pack caches. Yes. C O N tab. C O N. C A tab. It should be safe to remove that cache directory. Yeah. There wasn't as much in that directory as I was expecting. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. Yeah. Well, you don't anticipate anything going haywire here, do you? It shouldn't. I haven't done this though in like six months. As whenever we first Three deployed months. this contract, I haven't redeployed since then. Well, I guess it's not true. I've deployed to test nets, but it's still been a couple months since I've done this. Almost. Can I roll JSON? Is it deployed? Hang on. I need to look at. So it was, it's the creating. I don't know that we can't use the. The um just the file we can just reference this file, can't we? Well, no. The problem is, is, is the question is for the libraries, where are they deployed? What's the address that they're deployed to? And is it the same as the contract address? Can we use the contract address and use an ABI for the library and have it work? I don't I know. I think so. I really I don't know enough about isn't how that what we did with work. Isn't that what we did with bits? No, with bits we had an actual address where the library was deployed. Well, why don't open up? Why open don't up, we just deploy the library and get one? Um. Well, because the deployment script doesn't do that currently. I think that maybe we okay. Well, the, why don't we not use a library? Why don't we just another smart contract to get the data doesn't have to be in a library within this file right we can just reference it like we reference everything else in open zeppelin or wherever you're getting your token standards well those right? are all including information in the main contract the the open zeppelin stuff um if you click on source in that artifacts directory if you look at source and then um, like bits.json. What's in bits.json? 
just say guy. Maybe the bottom. Now that I remember hey, it's the bottom, bike code. it references the bike code. But it doesn't have, open up uh, bulk dispersible NFTs dot JSON. See, no, it's that dot address file in the the root in up a level from where you're at. There's a dot address file for the bulk dispersible NFTs, right above Rinkaby at the bottom. Okay. Um, look at it look Polygon at that scan. Yeah, because we just need another one of these, it looks like. So go to the contract. And then under more options on the scroll up to the more options on the right hand side. It's a gray box down from where you're at. This is this is this a proxy. Oh, really? Hit close on that. Go back to the, the HH deploy. I thought that HH deploy successfully verified it. Um... So that should be... Hang on. It would be, it's up there, it's up there where it says verifying. It's like the top quarter of the screen, verifying blah, blah, blah. The API endpoint responded that the address does not have bytecode. This can happen that the contract was recently deployed and hasn't propagated to the back end yet. Try waiting a minute. So run yarn HH deploy again. Yeah, it's there. Run yarn HH deploy. Yeah, I think that Polygon Scan hadn't found it yet. We are so efficient. And because nothing has changed, the implementation address is the same. And it's going to do this 25 times. I'm pretty sure it's what this is set to, how many loops this is set to run for. Um, I'm going to grab a drink. Yeah, I think I'm going to do the same. Let's take five minutes. Okay. Okay. Is your audio better than it was a few minutes yes, ago? Yes, yes. You're no Can longer you hear me better up. now? Okay, good. All right.
All right, I'm back if you are. Okay, I'm here. Okay, I think it's just complaining that we don't have a uh, an address like we do right here. The bits address, the bulk address. We yeah. don't have a roles address. So I just need to create a file and then we manually dump it in there or it's, it, it was auto-spawning these just through the deploy. Um. I I really need to ask the internet because I don't I there's I don't understand I, how libraries work entirely. No, I think that this is the one that like I manually changed these to my on the private label one and it all worked fine. So I don't know. Where did you get the address for the library? I probably dug for it like in the in the deployment or the ABI or something. I know that there's one, some of the byte code, not the byte code part of it, but if you scroll all the way to the bottom, it's more than the ABI. It's everything with the, the deployment. And if you scroll way down there, it has the different addresses for the contract and all that. But I, I can't remember where that file is. So maybe we need to go find that in the deployment. Go into a polygon scan real quick. You want me to grab the address? Yeah. Except you want oh, the proxy it. address. You want the yeah. address you've already got here. The, this 312? Yeah. And do contract and then verify. No, you want. And also remember the first time. Go ahead. This isn't the proxy address. You need the... Uh... Right, 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 right. So deploy... Hang on. If you look right underneath the 25 repetitions of 085, it's that 0x85. That one, that, the one that's repeated over and over again. Yeah. And now more options. Okay, yeah, you can go back to the 0x85. I already did this, right? It's just giving me the same page again. Yeah, it okay. says down at the bottom, it says successfully saved. So you can yeah, click that, the contract address. That 0x85, you can click it there. And then go to contract, and then go to uh, read as proxy real quick. We're looking for the library, right? The yeah, smart I was looking. I was looking. Have. Yeah, I was hoping the library would be in there somewhere, but I don't see it. Um, but it should be written somewhere in a file structure. Right? I mean, hard hat's smart enough to say, "Hey, I'm going to give you this ba this massive file over here. If you need that information, dig down." 
I would. Th I don't know. I honestly. So do you? I, I'm asking the internet right now. Okay. Like, where does Hard Hat keep all of its? Yeah. You know. I think hopefully this is it. And it'd be great if it was in there somewhere. Yeah, if you do, can you do code folding? Go back up to where you. And I do that again. So talk key. Go up to the top. Go up to where you were before. Um, go hover over the. Yeah, it's that. It, no, move to the number nine. Click the little arrow. Click that arrow for that one as well. See these, it's just the source. Is it, does it somewhere have like? Yeah, there's. It, well, if, if it, you if you go to line it's eight, be go to line eight real quick. Min and then code yeah fold sources. What's after sources? Okay. Um, Settings. Let's look down at output maybe. Yeah. This. I think that all that sources is, is output in sources. No, no. I think that sources is just the source code. This is an input. I don't think you want to see sources. I think sources is the source code. I think you want output. Yeah, the next section is output. So it, this, yeah, let me look it up in the internet. It it's like dug in. I if we know the fun, the the name of it, it'll drop us right in there. Did you find anything? I got distracted by looking at what you were doing. Um. Okay, I have similar as you before. Ethers. Here it is. It's in the metadata. Hang on, let me switch to your screen real quick. Um, I think it's in here somewhere. This is referring back to different, like, initializable. And if it's not here, hopefully it's close, because these are the contracts. I think. But I don't know where the yeah. libraries would be, but I assume that it's going to be in here somewhere. Upgrade wool.
if you search for the contract address that you know, which is 85 something something, or uh, no, the the three, go back to the the hard the hyper hyper real quick. Yeah, that one three one two. Search for three one two four four, and see if that shows up. Mm, that's bad news. Well, just try three. Well, it wouldn't have four. that. Yeah. Try it without the yeah, zero X. Have that. Just three one two four four. Yeah, I don't think it's going to have this number yet, though, right? This Why is the not? final result of all of everything. Because this would be the final result of... Oh, is it all just... Yeah, I don't know how it would re report this back. I mean, it, it could do the entire yeah. build and then output this file. This file might not be output but, until after the end. I don't know, maybe the proxy's in there. But it doesn't show up. Yeah, you could you could check. The reason I was having you search for 31244 is in case it's not um, checksum capitalized. Like if it was all lowercase. I wouldn't expect that it would be, but maybe. I don't know. Or you could turn off the capitalization check for your search. Okay, it doesn't help. Go to packages, contracts, scripts. Look at deploy real quick. Um, wait a second. I'm looking for where it gets the contract address. So, it looks like it's called deployment. Do uh, online 92, do a console.log deployment. And search for the number 25. Change it to 5. It should be safe to do so, I think. And that'll keep it from looping so long. So are you in charge of, within this code right here, to, to as it's deploying, to pull back that location of the library? That's what I'm trying to figure out is if that deployment gives us the location of the library. Or if um, it's just stored in some memory somewhere. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is being I guess even if it was, yeah. deployed. It, the, the libraries are being, I mean, the libraries are being accessed by the contract. And they're there somewhere. So it would make sense. Because the same thing that happened with bits, but it needs to be done differently than we did with the bits and the other, the other one. Um, can't think of the other one. The other one is called Rolls. The other library is called Rolls. Yes. Just run yarn hh deploy and let's see if there's anything in that deployment object. No, it says that there should be an address here, right? It should say Rolls dot address. Um. 
Did it create a bits dot address? See, that's what I that was my first question. This was created the first time when we made that first library. But I don't remember how we ended up with this. So I guess we could remove it, deploy again, and see if it repopulates. Because then we'll know. We need to go back in the code and make sure whatever it's doing with bits to address, doing it with all address, too. Maybe we just left out some of the code. Go to, to go, go back to the deployment script. Yeah, because you were completely removed that polygon directory. So that's a new, that should be a new file. So this is auto generating somehow. We just haven't. Yeah, since we go added, back we haven't to the looked at the code there that says, go "Oh, we need to this the too." Deployment okay. script. Scroll up towards the top. That's it. Hang on. I think you, you highlighted what I was looking for. So, um. Oh, and here's the Mumbai thing. Oh, no. Yeah. That's fine. That's So yeah, it's that, working right for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Right here. Hang on. Let me, let me read. So on line 204, remove const library equals and the equal sign. Copy lines 204 through 206. Paste them right there. Put in, change bits to rolls for the second one. I think that's what causes that dot address to be output. 210 needs to be in, de indented. Try running yarn HH deploy again. Hang on, what's the, it complained, oh, transaction under, we we'll just run it again. Okay. Um... Yeah, hang on. You scroll, see any of that. Scroll. I do want to see oh, yeah. that. I want you to scroll slowly through that. Just to stop, actually. Let me just read from the top real quick. So, ABI encoder errors, trust, deploy. Scroll down. Keep going. Yeah, hang on. Let me read the the estimate gas. Estimate gas. Okay, keep going on down. Okay, hang on. Now we have functions, which I think is just a repetition of call static. You can scroll through that too. Hang on. Wait. Now we have populate transaction. Okay, scroll scroll through that. Hang on, now we have filters. Okay. Yeah, see we have an address that's just the address. It's not it doesn't give any other addresses.
Let's just hard code them in. Hang on. So, well, I don't understand why that deploy, why adding that deploy roles, contract roles, didn't work. On line 207, we just added something that I expected to cause. That I thought that was the reason there was a bit thought address. Where in this code is it? Is it creating the folder and throwing it that down there where it, it threw um, these two? Go to. I mean, this doesn't look auto generated to me. This isn't like the, you. If this is anything you did. If it was like this, it means that you had me probably pasted in there. If it wasn't, there would be more information in here. It just would be a random thing. No, if, it was if you go to the deploy script. Go to the deploy script. I'm assuming. Okay. Yeah. You, so go where? That, 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 is, that is how it's generated. Go to the deploy script. Search for write. Like his writing down or W R I T human rights. Um to address deployed. I think that it's line one fifty two. Four. This writes the file, okay? And it just writes the deployed address. The, the the string deployed is all that it writes to that file. So what so where is anything that refers to bits? Like it would have to say, oh, you're the bits thing. And what and, and you need to update so, this area. That's what's so weird. I don't understand okay. why it doesn't. Um what it, would it be easier if we cleared that and why and watch to regenerate those? Let me let me okay. let me read this again. It's not addressed. It's not addressed. It's verifying artifacts. Address ABI and ARG save to search for address comma space ABI. Okay, hang on. There is config pass artifacts if process env pwd and saved dir starts with saved dir equals saved dir substring. Yeah, that's complicated. Um Scroll up just a, a smidgen. That's so weird. Hang on. Let me let me just read this one more time. Does bits occur anywhere else in this file than online? 205? Nope. Huh. So that has to be what's causing it to be... Well, what about this one? The, the, the bulk dispersible NFT. It gets this somewhere, but I know that's the deployment address. But should we look at the code for that and just see if we can maybe see, does it use that same code to create this? The bits go address? Back, go back to the... Well, that's what that line 154, I thought, was that write the fs.write sync of deployment. Um, address. So... 
Real quick, comment out line 204 through 206. And run, no, just 204 through 206. Run that. Um, let's see if it, no, it didn't generate it. Man, at this point, I'm just saying, yeah, let's just put it on our public rep and just say it's over there. Just like, you know, I go to Open Zeppelin or you're going at a game right now. And there it is. What is, you don't, do you know an address for that library? No, I'm just saying hard. Well, we have the library, right? Forget about the address. We just say it's 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 saved in that database right there, which is when it goes out to Open Zeppelin. That's all it's doing. What do you, I don't I do not understand you what you're saying. Okay, let's go back to the, let's go back to the code. Not all the libraries are built directly into our smart contract, right? True. They're out on other smart contracts. Okay. They're out even on just some code that it just brings in as an import. So I'm not telling you anything you don't know. So I don't know why I would. Yeah, I don't need to go any further than that. I'm sure you've already thought about it. Yeah, I'm going to ask the internet one more time. Okay, so hard hat ethers. If you call in the deploy script, that's it. Yeah, like that's a library. And that's all I was saying that we would just deploy our own and. It can be put in the constructor. We can save it as variables. It's like, we're just going to make a smart contract that goes, here's the data you need. Now, how are we going to tie it all in? Well, that, I guess that's for you to kind of decide if that's how you want to do it. It seems like the challenge is we're trying to call it from with an internal library, and it's messing things up. So why so don't you, we just go get it from an external? We put it in another file. We put it in a separate file and yeah. see if it works. 
separate separate file um, and if it needs to be a smart contract we'll just put it in a smart contract otherwise it's it's going to be in it's not going to be a solidity file but it's it's kind of fun to do it that way if you want to get an abi in a in a smart contract location it just queries that and it gets the the roles we need as an enum or something but like i said that's that's kind of your department it's like the way that the code gets crafted it just seems like we're just like trying to fix something that we can just kind of hack through it if we needed to so I let's that you're try to do this in the source directory create a roles.sol And then cut roles from, well, just the library roles, which comes after the library bits. Not the functions, right? Yeah, the, the whole data, the whole right? library. The library includes the enum and the functions that come after it. You gotta scroll up. You're in the contract now. Not gonna be calling. So we're not calling them from the library. We're, we're doing the front functions also. Okay. Was it these two? Yeah. And then we can just pass these like as a con with a, as a constructor, right? We're like, well, there they are, and they're never going to change. Well, if you do an import, can you do an import in the main contract? You should be able to. I mean, that's kind of the whole point of this. So I think, yeah. But so okay. I mean, add one to the the contract. What does this need to be? Capital uh, roles. Or do we need to take it backwards to packages? Nope. You just need to be capital roles, I would think. And maybe dot slash capital roles. Does it make any sense to pass it as a structure? It's kind of already doing that. I don't well, understand the library linking. I don't understand why it's not. I want you to try to run a method. I want you to run get contract factory from artifact. How am I going to do that? You want me to, so to in the oh, go into Polygon script, Scan? In the deploy script. Hang on, I'm looking real quick at something. Patch or turn to zero. Hang on, I'm, I'm looking at the con Ether's contract factories, which I think might be useful. Huh. 
contract address. Um, hang on. Meta class mess. Uh, um, yes, in the deploy dot ts. Online, um, go to after the deploy method. Deploy begins on line 28 and goes for a bit. Yeah, there you go, after main. Um, go down just a little bit further. Go to try on line two thirteen, put a new line. Ethers dot I gotta look at the method name again. It's something long. Um, it is ethers dot. Where did it go? I was just looking at it. Um, oh, here it is. Get contract factory from artifact. Let me see. Get contract factory from artifact. Okay, open paren. Single quote roles. Close quote, comma. Um, search for get signer in this file. Just a, so signers a signer. on deploy. Search for contract factory. No, that's yeah. Hang on. Give me just a second. I need to read this. Um, click back in hard hat or in hyper to look. I'm looking for that deploying contract. There should be a deploying roles in there because I called. You can remove that the the print statement with that with deployment in it. There's a console dot log, uh, yeah, that one nine ninety two. You can remove that. Did it print out anything before? See, it says publishing bits. I don't understand why it's publishing bits. Oh, that is, that is, okay, that's fine. I understand that. Uh, 
Um, scroll up above, or just run yarn hard hat deploy again. HH deploy one more time. Well, hang on. We we have an unfinished line. It's going to complain. Uh, go go back to the search for the contract. Yeah, do rolls, comma, space. Just open brace, close brace. What does that do? Um, do uh, At the front of that line, do console.log. Open print, open brace, CF, colon. And then close brace. Brace closed paren at the end of the line. And await before ethers. Close brace, close paren. And await before ethers. Yeah, HH, yarn HH deploy. <laughs> This is in red. Go search for contract. I got something wrong in here. Artifact. Search for contract factory again. So contract. Um, uh, let me, let me see if there's an example. In their example, they just show... A quoted string for get con. Let me see. That's for get contract factory. Let me let me make sure. Oh, hang on. I gotta look. Give me a second. Let's try instead of get contract factory from artifact, let's just try get contract factory. See if that'll run. Did you comment out strings in the contract up at the top? Oh, okay, yeah, you got to import strings from... So go to the main contract. Okay. Oh, no, that's... Hang on. 
that's the signer address. That's not useful. Um, hang on. I don't understand something. Go back to the code real quick. See, I am expecting... Nope, go back, go back to the where you were, you just were in the deployment script. Online, so when we call line 185, we call deploy. And then on line 206, we call deploy. Go up to the deploy method. It's almost at the top of the file. There you go. You, you just skimmed right over it. Okay. C line 47. I don't understand why I don't see a deploying roles anywhere. Because line, just go back down to 206 real quick. Is the is the deployment is the deploy call before or after? Oh, it's before the get contract factory. So scroll up above the contract factory. The in the in hyper, scroll up above where the contract factory is printed. Hang on, stop for a second. I still don't see deploying roles. I see deploying bulk dispersible NFTs, but I don't see deploying roles, and I don't understand why I don't see that. Because line 206 should be calling deploy with contract set to roles. Um... Real quick in hyper scroll up stop for just a second. Hang on. Ugh, so weird. Um go up to go up again to the deploy method. Over the top of the file. Just let me, let me look at this again and try to figure out where we're not getting to the log statement on line 47. Just to try something different, move the deploy, go to move line 206. Move line 206 through 208. 
above to line 184. Actually, move him to line 182. Move it all the way up. Go above primary. Rerun yarn HH deploy. I just want to see it print. I don't understand why that line's not printing. Okay, deploying rolls. That's better. Very good. Look, this yeah. is new. No, I, I Six saw that. CE. All right, so let's what? Just cut and paste it in there? And hard code it? Into no, you should have created a file for it. Oh, yeah, cool. There it is. So, and copy okay. the so copy line 182, I think it was. One, yeah, copy the uh, make that one line. Remove the the new lines in the yeah. Make that one line. One eighty two through one eighty four should be one line. No, not that line. You you had it right. Yeah, and it should be indented. It should be indented, and there should be spaces around contract and roll. It's an object, right? Yeah, I didn't know if that was in Solidity, too. This is JavaScript. This is JavaScript, okay. So spaces around here. Yeah. And now copy that line and change roles to bits. Okay, you can remove 206 through 208. You can remove 210. Okay, so now edit the test. Packages, contracts, tests. Online, copy line 15. Let, copy it, yeah, and do change bits to roles. Copy line 32 and 33 and 34. Change bits to rolls. Copy line 43. And do bits to rolls again. Copy 
Okay. So now line 66 change token to rolls same for line 67 and 68 Why is that underlined? Go to line 13. What is this? What's on line? Or 106, rather. 106. Hang on. Um, change roles there to set. Set and then capital roles. And change line 112 to set roles. Okay. Search for token dot token dot not bits. Yeah, that roll you could replace token dot roll index for name. So you want line one twenty one or Yeah. Replace that with rolls dot roll index for name. Lowercase roll, no space. Lowercase rolls, no space. At the beginning. Is there a space at the end? Yeah, no space at the end either. Okay. That should be safe to do. All of them? Yeah. Want me to march through them or all of them? It should be, sa it should be safe. Now look for errors yeah, in the good. file. Are there any errors anywhere else? Because there's there's. Sh no. Run yarn hh looks test. Good. Hang on. Search for role index for name. Yeah, search on down. There should be, well. Why does it not like that?
If you're saying anything, I can't hear you. No, I, I'm, I'm just reading, trying to figure out why it's doing that. Um, do a console.log. After you do roles.deploy, it's like line 17-ish. It's line 30. You want it here? 30, no, it's line 46. Do a console.log. No, after line 44, do a console.log rolls. After line 44. What do you want? Rolls. So scroll up to where that print out, yeah. Hang on, scroll up. Stop. There's a role index for name function. I don't get why it's reverting or throwing like that. Um, roll index for name. Oh, um, no, that's right. It's a string. Scroll up again and look at the the roles contract. Remember, I could I got to make sure there's money in it too. Yeah, I think it would be a different error. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Okay, scroll up where the code in hyper. Yeah, it's role index for name string. Um, hang on, let me, let me just read for a second. Index for name string. Oh, look, these are hard coded in here. Yeah. Well, maybe they're not. Maybe they're queried somewhere. Yeah, they're probably generated right by. There's a gas. There's something that, that handles the gas estimation. I don't really know how it works. Um, just to be sure, let's try something. Edit the roles, um, library. Scroll down. Uh, stop. Hang on a second. Um, guys is a pain in the butt, but let's do it this way. Um, on line 82, change role. Guys, it doesn't seem like the right way to do this, but let's do it this way anyway. Change it to uint8. And then... Cast line eight on line eighty six. Actually, and if you hold down alternate and click, does it? Well, it lets you click on a, 
like line 89 at before roll on line 89. If you hold down alternate and click. Alt's not the key for me. It's so strange. I wonder what no. it is for you. Control like shift alt, maybe shift alt. Yeah, that gets us closer. Okay, do that. Click in here. Click on. And then shift. Hold on. Might give me too much though. Alt shift. Yeah, it's getting me too much. It's giving me two rows. Anyway, I, I can do them pretty quick. There's only ten of them. Just cast what to you a want unit it? eight. You want it to be cast them to a unit eight. Uh, it's unit eight and then a paren. A paren at the front no. and at the end, right? Just just after no unit eight. No at the front. Okay. Okay. And then you got to close it. Yeah, at the end. Yeah. Right. Yeah, he does semicolon on line 107. See if that uh, yarn HH test. Remove the the console log of um, in um, the uh, test. There's a console log of roles on line forty five. Look for token dot roll in roll name by index. <laughs> and change token to rolls. Run the test again. All these? No. Leave these ones alone. Those are fine. There's only two. There's only two functions in that library. So it does have to be a cast to a UN in order to be passed out, apparently. So go to the library again.
online scroll down to the uh, stop uh, line 59 change role to UN8 on lines this one you can if you do uh, click on before roll on line 64 control shift and the down arrow you went eight open paren nope nope you didn't want to do that control z uh, open paren no you want you went eight yeah, there you go. Open paren. Now, control right arrow. Do it again. Now, close paren. Try running the test again. Awesome. Okay. So now run UI yarn UI colon start. Or actually, no, we've got to deploy it. So run yarn oh, yeah. HH colon deploy. Three, two, one. Okay. So we're done with all these files for right now. And where did we um, end up last week? Did we get the the ENV stuff solved? Is that all done? I figured it out. Yeah, we didn't. Fi we never figured it out, but I got it eventually. I figured out what's what. Why? why oh, I, I, I never went back to, <laughs> and I never even bothered going back to uh, Stack Overflow to see if there was an answer because I knowing you, you were going to figure it all out with Stack Overflow. Yeah. Okay, it eventually so we're made done some in here, kind sense. of. Are we um on to UI stuff now, or no? We're we not. We're still not. We don't know that. There's probably that. Oh shit! I'm just trying again. Oh yeah. That Go um. Ahead. Token index for name. Those that those things that were called on the token contract initially, but now are in a library. Those are accessed in the code, so we're going to have to find those and fix them still. Fix them where? In the UI. Oh, that's right. So, well, I'll, can we do this a way where we can give our, give ourselves a way to roll it back, really like a toggle, just to remind people like me or something? Or are we just going to abandon the old one out of the repository now? What do you mean, roll back the? Well, remember we've got our existing one that we've got a bunch of tokens in that I, I don't know. I don't think Lux is reading on those right now, or uh, Musashi, but maybe they are. I don't know. I don't think so. I think like, really. I'm not you're saying that we need one, to. Okay. You're the only one that had. You had some token gating stuff. For. Uh, well, he had his red boxes. stapler and Lindley. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he does have his stapler. Yeah, so I don't, I don't care about any of my stuff. Being used anywhere. And Lux hasn't yet deployed okay. anything because 
I'm pretty sure that it hasn't been working well enough. Um, okay. So search for open up the the uh, contract um, right the library the uh, roles library. Mm, lost it again. Contracts. Yeah, contracts and source. No, in contracts. Packages, contracts. Packages, contracts. Scroll down. Search for role index for name. In the in all the files. Okay, go to Packages, UI, lib, hooks, or maybe source lib hooks. Packages, oh. UI, lib hooks. Source lib hooks, actually. It's source lib hooks. Okay, on line 24, <clears throat> replace const's contract with bit's contract. Actually, let's make it bit's library. And you can remove contract, yeah. Now copy that and, and do roles library right after it. Okay, search for const, C-O-N, C-O-N, consts, C-O-N-S-T-S. -S. There we go. Hang on. So line 73, um, change const contract address, copy, copy 73 and 74. Change const to bits. And um, contract to library. Actually, it could just be bits address, honestly. I don't think we need the... Yeah, I think bits address is sufficient. And then for 73 and 74, change <laughs> const to roles. Const contract to roles. Just roles address and set roles address. Capital. And then the line below it as well.
Let's search for consts. Okay. Copy line one twenty two. Yeah, copy that. Change for one of them, change const to bits. Lowercase. You missed one. And you don't need you don't need the con you don't need line one twenty two through the end of that. You just need bits and rolls. You don't need consts. Consts was bits. Uh what line you were chopping up? One twenty two. So is this one done? One you can remove one twenty two. Oh, okay. Through the end of 122. Yeah, all the way down. 122 to the close paren on one, yeah. And now on 135, change bits to rolls. And change it in all the, yeah. Okay, search for consts. Okay, so change that to just set bits address. Remove contract. Change the cons on line 250 to bits. I think you can, you could make lines 242 through 244 one line. I think that, that that'll fit. Yeah. And the same thing for 245 through 247. No, you, I would leave the no, I would leave the dot then on the next line. Yeah, but 245 through 247, you can squish up. Uh, there's a space on 245 there, to remove the space before the open paren. Now, copy 242 through 246. And, yeah, put a new line between the two. Put a new line before 247. Yeah. And change bits to rolls for the second bits. Second part. <laughs> Okay, finally, 265 to bits contract. Or actually, it's bits library. Bits library. And copy it and do roles library.
And real quick, go up to where you have Bits Contract on... I don't know which line it's on. Scroll up. Um, line... Hang on, stop. Go, well, I said stop and then go down. Uh, search for Bits Contract. Bits Contract. There you go. Change that to Library. On 123 and 134. Change contract to library. Audio's out. Uh, 134. <laughs> to a library. Now search in all file for cons contract. Const, C-O-N-S-T-S. -S. Contract, all one word. There you go. Uh, yeah, go to home. You could just replace const contract with bits library. You could do a search and replace, probably. You should be able to. Okay, search through all files for token dot or R no, actually it's R O actually just T R A C T dot roll Yeah, so go to those. Go to those So on line Thirty-five. Add to that line. Actually, put a new line after. We'll say actually after RW contract. Put roles library, and then a comma and a new line. And there you go. And now, line 57, replace RO contract with roles library. And the same thing, yeah, on 60. Yeah, line 88 as well. Uh, we're replacing our W contract here? Yeah, with Rolls Library. I have replaced it here too, or no? No. Well, um, okay. 
<clears throat> replace. Hang on. Wait. 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 Um. Do we call RO contract? Is RO contract referenced in that try block? Or is it just RW contract? Just RW. Oh, only in the try block. I thought I just replaced an RO though. You were probably paying attention better than I was. We did like RO and we moved to RW, but I think that's what you wanted. Yes. Well, you need me to go back. Okay. It's that it's specifically that role index for name and role name by index. Those two methods need to be called on roles library. I think that you can safely replace RO contract on line 79 with roles library. Okay. So do UI colon start. That's surprising. <laughs> Sure is, but uh, why? We, um, um, because it's stubborn and it's held in my cache or something. Because V likes to hold on to stuff. I just got to think for a second. I have no idea. Um. Because somewhere in the UI. If you go to Chiefs, does it also show? Hard coded. Does Chiefs also show those? Um... Yeah. Do uh, go back to Hyper and do a S to show what files have changed. So Does, I think we had to hard code it in somewhere in the UI. Just let, let me do this just to satisfy my curiosity. If I just, just type in the zero X's. And it looks like all these are new. Yeah. No, that that's the old one, right? Um, do a git diff and then that address file git diff packages UI contracts polygon bulk disburse yeah packages UI contracts you should have a lowercase s and a lowercase UI slash Try hitting tab more often. UI. CON. And then bulk. Will it complete? Oh, polygon and then bulk. A D D R. Hit enter. So you just got to get the new one in there. Hang on. When you open that file, though, you see the two F and not the eight five F. Well, these are all the ones in our UI code that reference 
any address. I mean, I'm just saying, I mean, the way that diff looks, it looks like the address that should be showing up in that file is the 8F. Because the red means deleted and the green means added. Um, but that's not what shows up in that file, right? When you open that file, it's the 2F that shows up. Correct, but I don't but I don't think this file is auto generated. This is one that we I think we had to manually put in there. It is generated, yeah. That's why No, it's the, not generated. It it is generated. The UI colon publish mm -hmm. UI colon publish copies the the addresses from the contracts directory and puts them in that folder in the UI directory. I just don't understand why git diff is showing that 0x85f in green, but that's not what shows up when you open the file. If you do an AA and hit enter, it shouldn't matter, but do an S now and hit enter. And it's still, if you like re refresh, right click on or go back to VS Code and click on File and then Revert. File in the upper menu and then Revert. Huh. I don't understand how that works. Um. Oh, you're in Mumbai. That's that's one of the issues. So UI contracts polygon and then bulk dispersible NFTs address. Okay, so that's 85F. Reload the page again just so that we can see it. Reload the local host version. You'll have to, yeah, you killed your dev server. What the fuck? <laughs> it's so weird. Uh,. Do you want me to send it over to you and see since you? Yeah, let me try to run it and see if I see the same thing. That's I don't understand at all what's going on. So are you ready to tee it? So, yeah. Um, yeah, do S and hit enter just to, so, we, so I can see what we change. So, yeah, I guess just... Uh, Migrating to roles library in the UI. T space migrating to roles library in the UI. I didn't get the last words. Uh, roles in the UI, library, or that's it. In the UI. Lowercase, uppercase. Uppercase. I would. It's yeah. Okay, I'm going to go take a 15-minute break because we'll my wife's eating lunch. Do I'm GP go... before you... Okay, that's yeah. right. Yeah, I'll see you at Okay, so what time is it right now? Is it 45? Yeah. Yeah, it's top of the hour. Okay. Cool.
Okay. I have an idea. Okay. So remove in remove packages UI node modules dot veet. And share your share your screen. I have no idea what you're typing. What I was going to mention, in the process of fixing the environment variables, I got Vite working for the static build. So we're no longer using Webpack. We're using Vite for both the production and the development. Awesome. Yeah. So RM- You said remove this file? Comp no. No. Oh. Node modules. Dot Vite. You can do it on RM dash R, or you can, yeah, you can switch to the directory. Which one was it? UI node modules. I just have to do it from here, then, right? You can do it from there, yeah. But node modules. Slash dot Vite. Dot Vite. Do LS. Type LS and let's make sure there's no other cache. Just to be safe, RM dash R dist. Node modules is still there. Yeah, you removed the Vite subdirectory. Oh, just the Vite. Okay, gotcha. Go ahead, do what? RM dash R dist. And do LS, yeah, one more time. Okay, so try running the did again. Try running the the what's it thingy. Development server. <clears throat> Okay. God, it's so freaking weird. Um, go into. And we. You're breaking up. No, I didn't. I wasn't saying anything. Okay. Um. God, I just, I really don't understand why this is happening. Um, well, there's very few places that it even get this information from. So it has to have a pointer to a smart contract, or at least to the JSON file to generate so go to lib hooks packages ui lib hooks uh yeah scroll down to find there is a um well actually first go to packages Contracts, scripts, publish. Hey, let me look at this. Um, scroll down. Is there, see if there is. Scroll down just a little bit more.
it's if you run if you look in packages UI contracts <laughs> Polygon, yeah. See, there's a roles dot. I don't understand why it's saying that file isn't found. Go back to the. What's the error again in the console? Scroll down. Unknown import dot dot slash contracts polygon roles dot address dot ts. It's like this is running from a different directory. I don't understand. Because that is file the dot exists. Dot? Um, I believe... Looking for it in the wrong area? Maybe. Um, go into the hooks again. Scroll down to where it's got those import statements. There's some imports. Um, somewhere. There they are. But so it finds bits. Though, bits. Right? That's the thing. Like It's finding bits, but it's not finding roles. Hmm. Um. It really is like it's in the wrong directory somehow. Go into node modules and then dot vite. Uh, packages UI node modules. And then dot vt. Okay, never mind. That's not useful. Um, hang on, scroll down again. React DOM client rack helmet rack deployment rack direct map. Okay, yeah, I don't see anything useful. Um, that's just so strange that it is loading because it's loading the the bulk dispersible NFTs address correctly. Well, no, it's not so loading. Go back and look at every. Yeah, go ahead. We need to go back and look at every single one of these. <laughs> Any zero access. See, I don't understand La the oh, the one. one the bulk dispersable NFTs address. That's ring. That's ring. Here's polygon. Yeah, I don't understand. That's not right. It's... That this should is be. Why it's... That should be 85 something. So let's hard code it. See what happens. Run, y run yarn HH deploy one more time. From UI? Yeah, that's fine. I can do it from here, right? I think so. What was the error?
Running again. Weep. Yeah, I mean, that's just, that's the old one. Try running it one more time. Vage H deploy. And now that we know where the gas is, I guess we can bump the gas comply. We have to. Um, yeah. But this is usually worked. Yeah, we're okay now. so why don't we just change this like are you sure i mean obviously let's it's not auto generating this, to, this let's wait for this to finish running the last step should, it should just replace the address this over the last step of the the publishing the deployment process should copy that over It does not. See, it says... So let's just... So go into packages, contracts, artifacts, polygon. And then look at the address there. There it is. That's the right one. Hang on. I'm looking at line... Look at, in the... Um, in... Um, the, the, deploy, the deploy script, it says... Reading, contracts, artifacts, polygon, source, blah, blah, blah. And then reading, contracts, artifacts, polygons. Look, it's, it's, update, it's updated. It's updated. It is now. Yeah. Okay. Run the, the, the dev server again. So I guess that's that thing. We jumped the gun on the propagation. It took a I lot longer understand. than we thought no, it would. We ran it, and it should have been... I don't know. I, I really am confused at this point. See? Well, there it is, still. Uh, do... Go ahead and remove the Vite directory again. Yeah, if you look at that contract, that contract has to be empty. I mean, there's no way that it's not. Well, it's 85-something is the address of that contract. I'm trying to do the old one, because still, the old one is still stubborn. That's so strange. Because it's still querying the old one. So it's in yeah. there somewhere. So I'll go back to the... Oh, here it is. 02FT. It's this one. It's in this... It's stuck here. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. The, the is export there a default. Source? I do hang not on, think hang on, auto... Hang on. Just one second. I think there's a packages UI contracts and a packages UI source contracts. Yeah, it's okay. right here. That's the we problem. need this one to be manually updated. Okay, go into the publish script, packages contracts. Packages contracts. 
scripts, publish, change line. Hang on, I gotta define which line to change. Um, scroll up. Scroll up. I'm looking for Publisher, which is defined somewhere up above where you're at. There we go. Hang on. Publisher is dot dot slash UI slash contracts. Add an SRC to after contracts. SRC slash run yarn HH colon publish. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. We don't need to deploy again. It's just public. We shouldn't have yeah. to. Yeah, it should. Uh, this HH colon publish. HH. Now, um, do go ahead and remove the packages UI contracts directory. What the hell? It's still in there. That's just weird. Yeah, it's still right here. Oh, 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 I, I, I screwed up. I screwed up. Go back to the publish. The source should have been before contracts, not after. Which file again? Packages, contracts, scripts, publish. So instead of contract source, it should be source contracts. Okay, now, if this doesn't work, I'm going to be genuinely confused. <laughs> but that really should do it. So HH colon publish. There we go. Thank goodness. Golly, that was a pain. Okay, so remove the contracts directory from packages UI. Packages UI contracts. Packages UI contracts. Yeah, it should be safe to remove that. Okay, so now, rather than creating super users, I wanted to see if it was possible that if we could get by by just doing specific tokens for permissions. Those are... Like the only one super user, which is the deployer, right? Yeah, I mean that's it's a, yes, that's it. Will yeah, the the owner of the contract can do whatever. 
Um, so if you if you could prove to somebody that you guys burned that address and nobody ever, you know, you spun it up in a group of people and nobody's got that good of a memory, you deploy it and you burn it, then that's about as good as you can get if you trust that nobody had a photographic memory. Yeah. Yeah, and even then we 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 don't want to do away with the ability to upgrade and stuff like that. But if we right. wanted to make I'm it just saying if it could be made said. immutable. Yeah. Well, so then let's do this as an exercise today because we have plenty of time. Let's do that for this brand new one and then let's get a private label one for me. So why don't you deploy this one unless you want me to deploy and I'll just be the deployer of both of them. But then that, in essence, that makes you the soup, the one super user of the achievements one. And I'll be the one super user on the demo one that I want to do for private label. Well, I wanted to see. And we'll just kind of like, that'll. I wanted to see if we could do it without any super users. Unless you want me to deploy. Well, that's what I. Well, that's kind of what I'm saying. There will no super user Well, I deploy it, it makes me the super user, which I'm fine with because I'm never going to utilize it. Yeah. So, I'll, but for private label one, I want the same. And remember, my private label one has been broken since I guess, last week or whatever. But I also told you I care we it to this point, or I'm just going to abandon the front end <clears throat> look that we're doing, and I'm going to start working with trying to integrate this functionality into the material UI dashboard. I'm just trying to like reason what's the use of time. Well, I need to get a one legal. Hey, you're breaking up again. Demonstrations too. Sorry, I lost the last okay. like five seconds of what you said. I'll find a, a time to interject that again. So let's just move on from here. Okay. So go into hard hat or go into hyper. You can close that now. We're through with the tests, I think. So do yarn HH colon grant and hit enter. Uh, try CM colon grant. Yarn CM colon grant. Okay, yeah. So do dash dash address. This bullet dot ETH. Yeah, you need a D instead of a B. And then dash dash roll. Space creator. Capital creator. Hit enter. Okay, get edit the hard hat config. This is we moved it to the library, so we have to load the library. So packages, contracts. Contracts. Hard hat config. Search for token something. Uh, roll index for name. Search for roll index. Not token roll, just roll. Okay. Um... So we want online, scroll up just a little bit. I need to see how address and ABI are loaded.
Hang on, that's it's um line two thirty six. Two thirty six. Uh so copy line two thirty one. Move line remove the new line between two thirty two and two thirty three. Have it be just glob.sync all on one line. Okay. Um, hey, I got to look at this real quick. Remove the new line between 230, 243, and 244. Okay. Um, so, copy... 231 through hang on let me let me we, we could probably create a function that does this and that's more effective than copying the entire thing and pasting it in again on line 220 at a new line Const space load space equals open paren open brace um space file name base so file name base yeah i think that that's how i would capitalize it too comma actually no comma just the just file name base and then a space and a closed brace close paren rocket Open brace. New line. Cut line 231 through 252. Okay. On line 227, replace bulk star with dollar sign brace file name base brace file name base okay Move line 237 up to, or 237 through the end of, to, yeah. Move that above the console.debug. Okay, on line, add a new line after 242. Plus, space, back tick. And then copy the line above, copy the space chalk dot hex, blah, 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 blah. Uh, before the dollar sign, put an at space, at space. Okay. 
Replace contract file with address. Okay. Now on line 245, put return. Open brace. Space ABI comma address comma name colon space contract name now on line 254 remove 254 through 275 Add a new line, put a new line there. Const. Open brace. ABI comma address. Close brace equals. Load. Open paren, single quote, capital bulk, star. Okay. So now, on line 245 needs indentation as well. As does 254. And 254 needs spaces in two places. Not there. Two other places. Yep. and around the equals. And I just realized something. You could actually cut 286 through 288. Yeah, cut it. Go up to the load function that you defined. Paste that at 2 after 244. Return it. Add it to the return statement. Why is ethers underlined on 254 or 245 rather? Okay. On line 221 after file name base put comma ethers On line 258, after load, open paren, put an open brace, file name base colon, and then after the close quote, comma ethers. Close the brace. On line 258, add contract after address. 
And in fact, I'm pretty sure you can remove ABI and address. I think you just need the contract. You don't really need the ABI and the address. Oh, I get, hang on, scroll down, scroll down. Remove line 264. Hang on, I can't move your cursor so I can read that. Hang on, settings, user, as. Okay, um. On line 258, after contract, comma, name, colon, contract name. Put a uh, open paren after the equal sign. And then a new line. And then a new line after that line and a closed paren. Okay. Uh, why does, yeah, is it because it's any? Yeah, put a colon after the closed brace. Open brace. File name base colon string. Uh, and then eth comma ethers colon maybe capital ethers? I'm not even sure. Are you asking what? Comma ethers colon eth capital ethers after string. You hear me? String, Amen. comma, ethers. This is all I heard. Comma, Colon, ethers. Is there more? Capital ethers. Hit, enter. Uh, I think that hover over ethers on line 258. Uh, um, try changing hover over ethers one more time. So it's node modules, ether lib ethers, and let's try just hard hat ethers helpers. I think that was what it said. Hard hat ethers helpers. Instead of ethers online um, 222. Hard hat ethers helpers. 222? Yeah, instead of ethers, hard hat ethers helpers. No, no, I'm sorry. Ethers, the ethers is the name of the variable, so it'll stay the same. But the type is wrong. That's why there's an error on 246. Try hard hat ethers helpers. Yeah. Hover over that again. Okay, it's still not quite there. Um, hover over ethers one more time. As in on line two fifty eight.
right? If you, can you go to the type definition? If you right click, yeah. Type of ethers. Okay, so huh, um I gotta think about this for a second. That's a little weird. Um Okay, scroll up to the top of the file. Do a um, go back to that type definition again. The type definition, the types extension dot ts, the other tab. Okay, it's import type ethers from ethers. So go back to the hard hack and fig and go up to the imports. Uh, change line 19 to import open brace space ethers colon lowercase ethers colon or it's actually not colon it's as yeah, and then close brace after the other ethers. No, 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 no. Ethers is ethers. Yeah, and then close brace. And then change the from single quote ethers. And add a type before the open brace. Type before the open brace. Go to where you have the ethers import or the ethers, the, the load function. 222, I think it was. Okay, so we're going to need to break this line up a little bit to make it more readable. So it should be const load equals open paren new line. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Close brace colon new line. Fi uh, and then actually open brace on 224 open brace new line. And then remove the comma and the space. Replace them with a new line. So file name base colon string new line. Ethers colon space uppercase ethers. No, ethers on line 226. Ethers colon space uppercase ethers. Leave that. So, well, you, yeah, but leave the leave what was there. So, ethers colon space uppercase ethers. On line 226 or 227? On 226. On 226. Okay, okay, so ethers colon, and then you want this just to say ethers. No, I want it to say uppercase ethers oh. and hard hat ethers helpers. No, and sign. And sign. And remove line 227. Put a new line after the closed brace. And de indented a tick. What doesn't it like about that uppercase ethers? Um, <sighs> S 
look up in the file. See if uppercase ethers is defined somewhere else. Do a case sensitive search. Okay, there's one. What was number two? Oh, it was in Hard Hat Ethers Helpers. Hang on, I got. I'm. This is confusing me. Um. Go back to the type extension .ts one more time. Let's try type of capital ethers instead of just capital ethers. So try type of ethers. Yeah, see if type of makes it happy. Maybe. I think that was everything. Okay, cool. That was complicated. Okay, so scroll down. You now have a load function. So it's, yeah, scroll down to the grant task. Okay, so copy 265 through 267. And paste them on, scroll down, yeah, go down. Stop. Let me look. On line 297, put a new line after the paste in what you just copied. And change. So it should read const open brace contract colon roles library And I think you can just remove the comma name colon contract name. Change bulk star on line 299 to roles star. Change contract on 302 to roles library. Try to run that grant again. Okay. So now, um, give yourself permission as well. So grant yourself creator permission. Now, is this like the second highest level? Because a creator can pretty much do anything or no? no. Creator can just create. That's exactly right. All those other things can't transfer. Can't, okay. Can't do anything else. <laughs> so, and I want to, yeah, and we, we should be able to do this relatively quickly. Um, run, run the UI dev. I mean, UI start, rather. Unless it's running in another tab. Yeah. 
Do you want to break and restart it? Or no, no, just just it should work. Okay. Should go to click on the the chalice. Actually, go back to list existing tokens and click on uh, view permission tokens. Does it show up? Oh, um, run yarn. It's like uh, do a do a grep G A T from package.json. G A T space package.json. I do it. Grab space G A T what? Package. Hit tab and then dot tab. That's it. Hit enter. The, there's no grep met, meta from package.json. You want to say meta? Yeah. Less package.json. Is there not a... Oh, it's in the contracts directory. We're in the wrong directory. So you could CD to contracts or you could CD up a, another level. And there is a, a top level task as well. But grep meta from package JSON. Uh, yarn gating dash metadata. That's it? Should work. Edit the gating packages or scripts slash gating metadata. Contracts. Scripts. Gating metadata. Um... Go back into the hard hat config and copy that load function. So const load is 222. Or two, yeah, that's it. Go back into gating metadata. I feel like we should be able to reuse this. Um, hang on, real quick. Let's create a library and put this in there. I think. Um, yeah, call it. Or actually, you could put it in helpers.ts. See how there's a, a helpers.ts? Um, let me think for just a second. Um, At the top of the file, do an import glob from quote glob. Quote glob. And import fs from quote fs.
on line 25 add comma config um, after ethers do control space it might not work no uh, up at the top on line 3 Import open brace. Uh, I'm sorry, import type open brace. Lowercase ethers as uppercase ethers. And then from ethers. Do a control space after hard hat ethers helpers. That should be safe. Do that. Hit enter to import that. Okay. Oh, uh, import chalk from chalk. Okay, so all we got to do now is config. Go back to hard hat config. <clears throat> Scroll down. Hang on, wait, 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 what's up? Um, line, that's it, line 64. Copy that hard hat user config. Just the name? You are config colon hard hat user config. You're going to need that whole thing. So config colon hard hat user config. Go back into helpers. Put a new line after line 31. Paste in what you just copied. Do a control space and then surely it'll find that. Okay, um, go back to hardhatconfig.ts. Find the, where you call, okay, so I scroll up. Import on line, on line after line 19, I actually, um, hang on, line I don't fully understand this. The thing is, is line 18 is imported from dot slash lib slash helpers. Oh, hard hat config is what, where it's, okay. Yeah, so just add comma load on line 18. After deregexify. Comma load. It may be lagging. I can't see that you've typed anything. Okay, there we go. Um, scroll down to where load is defined on 222. Remove 222 through 257. Put spaces around the, uh, the inside of the object on line 230. Uh, your audio is line two thirty. Line two thirty. You need spaces or two twenty nine. I'm sorry, two twenty nine now. Uh, and after ethers, comma config. Okay. 
go back to gating metadata. Hang on. Uh, so, uh, remove line 30. Hang on. Uh, online, after line 14, put an import. Open brace. Load. Close brace. From. Single quote dot dot slash. Slash. Um, and then lib helpers. Why are there, why are the braces, are those braces? Okay, those are braces. So on line 37, uh, const contract, const space open brace contract before line 37. Go ahead. Open brace contract. Close brace equals load open open paren open brace. File name base colon space bulk star. Single quote bulk star. comma ethers comma config and then remove line 38 through 59 okay then Scroll down. I gotta look for. What was the error? It was roll roll index for name. Where is roll index for name? Okay, so on line 108, const, open brace, contract, colon, roles library, equal, close brace equals, Load, open print, open brace, file name, base, colon, capital, single quote, capital roles, star, file name, base, colon, quote, roles, star, capital roles, comma, ethers, comma, config, And let's put deindent that line one tick. Put a open paren after the equal sign and a new line. P 
put a space after config and then a new line at the end of the line and a closed paren. Yeah, and fix your indentation on the line below. And change contract to roles library on line 113. On what line? 113. So that, that's that method that no longer exists on contract. Same on 114 or no? No, that, that still exists on the contract. Try running the gate gating metadata, whatever. Yeah. Add a export in front of load uh, in front of const in helpers. <coughs> Line twenty eight. Export const load. Let me just say, I read this. It does. Oh, wait. Line 262 in the. Yeah, put a comma on line 262. Ethers comma config. Hang on, this path must be an instance of string received undefined. So that's helpers TS line forty five. So move, take line 54 through 58. No, uh, no, hey, I'm sorry. It, it, that won't work. What I was going to do won't work. Um, on line 43, put a new line. console.log contract file I'm pretty sure that's not set is what the problem is mm. 
rerun the Yeah, contract file is undefined. So let's see. I just got to read for a second. <clears throat> okay, so it's config pass artifact slash source dir. Do a for that console.log copy what's inside of this, what's being passed to the sync method on 41. Should be a back tick and all that stuff. Everything, every, the back ticks and everything in between them. Yeah. And print them out on 44. You'll have to do like P colon, comma, P colon space. I think you, yeah, you got a dot. You got a dot and not a comma. Rerun that. Contracts. Now I got packages contracts slash it's not it's packages contracts slash artifacts slash source. Um on line forty four. Do an AR colon, or actually just do contracts home. Well, do do um a at the end of the line after the close back tick. Comma AR colon config dot pass dot artifacts. config.paths.artifacts You can put a question mark after config and it'll it'll be happy with it. Should be that's fine. Just run it. See if it'll run. Really? It won't run. I, I didn't know that it wouldn't run. Um, put a question mark after pass. Now it should run. I didn't know that was a fatal error. Okay. Okay. I understand. Um... On line forty 
36. Do at the end of the line after sources. Do dot replace. Open paren slash. Uh, carrot. Yeah, it's probably something very similar to that. Yeah. Hang on, it should be carrot. Yeah, and then after the slash at the end, comma, single quote dollar sign one, run that. Ta-da. Looks good. Hasn't died yet. Cool. Um, you can remove the console.log on line 44. Oh, what did what didn't it like? <clears throat> Invalid JSON RPC response received. Um, that's really surprising because it does the exact same thing every time. Like it's not doing something different at the end. Um. Just rerun it. Run it. Yeah, run it again. Is there something special about token one forty one? Shouldn't be. It should be. I mean, it should just be setting the token URI that's associated with each of those IDs. It shouldn't. It should be the same. Okay, it's on maintainer right now. Got it. Okay. okay, it was just an so RPC what do you think? error. Things are still not the most stable, and it's not our fault. It's the state of the ecosystem. So you should be able to reload the local host dev server in the browser. Nice. And you'll notice okay. now in the ID column, the ID column, it says what token it is it, it permissions, or all if it's for all tokens, which this is a this one's for all, so it does. Um. So let's. Actually, let's real quick add Lux as a as a creator. Pass. 
How do I how do I get like a previous line? Control R. Besides scroll. Control up. R. And then look for Grant. Something. Or that. And so how do I get it to if I enter it, it's not gonna run it, right? Hit the over arrow. Hit the hit, put, I think you can hit enter or you can hit the, the left or right arrow. Okay, so there it is. So change it to luxumbra.eth and remove single use. Does it look right? Yep. Now, click on new token type in the browser. And click on grant super user. What I want to do, this won't work yet. But what I want that to do is that to you you're a super user, but just for this one token is the idea. Yes, I mean because in essence, there, I mean there, I guess there should be a super user for the smart contract, but that's the deployer. I guess I mean it's nice to say, oh yeah, you're my business partner. I'm giving you as much access as me as a super user over everything on this smart contract. Yeah, but that's more use case specific, I guess. Yeah. So I guess we just need to start naming them differently. It was like, you know, contract super user or super user super user. But then there's, I think it's very important, like you said, just to have a super user and for the user to know that they're only a super user over that token. But maybe that's just a user. You know, the, just the the front end. We just well, it will show. Like, yeah, in that ID we'll column hover over here. In the ID column where it says all in parentheses, it'll just say a token number instead of all. It seems like we need more. Right? The super user, super user. Hang on, you're breaking up. Okay. It seems we need more. The super user or the con user. I, I apologize. I just I I'm getting like uh, uh, bleh, bleh. it's it's unintelligible. Try one more time. Yeah. Yeah. What I was saying is either the user needs to differentiate between those two in their mind uh -huh. or we need another token that's called like the contract super user or the token super user. But I'm not sure if we want to do that programmatically or if we just want to have a little hover over a little one of those I information that say. Unless we can already do Again, it, it was like the ID column, ahead. the ID column in the listing of all the tokens for the ones that are just the super user for a particular token, there will be a number in that in that field, and it, it, that number will be the number of the token that that affects. Whereas for the one where it's the super user of everything. It'll say all. So there is, it does distinct, it, it is possible to distinguish between That's those good then. currently. Okay. Okay, good then. So I should be able then in my notes or my demos to say over here, if it says all, it means these three people right here can do create function on this entire smart contract. Yes. It's not creating more individual. Well, I guess that was a bad example, but to be a creator, you have to be a creator of an individual token, right? You can't. 
Yeah. Will there ever be uh, something that says achievements creator? It says all, and then but if you still have it, it'll say creator in number. The only the creator on the Golly, I'm still having trouble. You're asking if they'll, for the creator, okay. if, they'll, if there'll ever be a token specific creator? Yes. Currently, we have the ability to create that, but it's meaningless. Because a creator for, is creating it, a new you, type, and it, you can't have a new type if the type already exists. It doesn't make any sense, really. What I want to do... Get an, I just need to clarify. Uh, it, over here, a super user will have a number. will not say all if super user is only for you for a specific token. I got to repeat. So I, say that. Say it one more time so that I, I, our connection is just really spotty. I'm not even going to bother asking the question. Let's 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 move on. I, I think you, I know the answer for what you showed me. Okay. So share your screen again. Hopefully it doesn't cause your voice to drop out. I can also, let me disconnect and reconnect as well. Hello. So for the most part, I can hear you clearly, but it buffers. It's like you and me, your voice will get behind our conversation and then it catches up. It appears my voice to you is just getting garbled. Are you on wireless or wired? And of course, I am. Like, I actually, let me, let me try something. I am currently surprisingly enough on wireless. I'm almost never on it, but for some reason my wired connection wouldn't work. Like it just, it said looking okay. for IP address. That's what it sounds like it's doing just trying to reassemble the packets and I'm getting it in a certain way and mine's getting garbled to you where what's coming to me is getting buffered. So I get all your words. They just come later. Let me try plugging in this ethernet cable again and see if it works this time. Maybe it's okay. fixed itself in the interim. All right. I don't know why it broke. And I think for, for me, I think what I'm willing to do now is just deploy a clean one for private label and then I'll either implement because mainly what I did is just made the look a little bit different with some different logos and stuff. Because I don't think that we need to go back in and, um, I mean, it might find and merge it if it's not much stuff. But just for the line we worked that it broke, I don't really as you need to have a you all. Okay, hang on just one second. Let me go check the other end of this Ethernet cable and see if it's connected correctly. It's like three minutes. Okay. Sure.
Yeah, something, either the port has gone bad. I switched which port it was plugged into, and it didn't fix it. So I'm at a loss. I'm going to have on. to do... Hold on one second. Just hold, hold on one second. Just hold it. Okay. Okay, I'm back. I was just saying. Okay, so um, yeah. either the port on my router has gone bad or did something's died in the cable, like the cable just spontaneously died. Maybe I don't know. It's going to take more debugging. Well, so I think. until that gets fixed, I won't be doing much talking because the the delay's not very good and and everything. So. Just go ahead and continue to talk to me about what you want to do. Okay. I want to... So, uh, can you share your screen? Because I wanted you to create a super user, a token with a super user permission set. And with the minting permission disabled. Yeah, so grant super user and disable mentor. Leaving everything else blank. I think so. That's the idea with super user is that it lets you do everything. So I can't do it from here because I don't have access to that private key. We only have the mnemonic, right? So I'm no, not a super you, user. No, you to granted do yourself a creator permission. Uh, so this is granting me super user for that specific token. Yep. Got it. Okay. So I don't even need to do this. That's only if I'm assigning it to somebody else. Yep. And something I want to do eventually is to remove some of those permissions. The ones that aren't specific, like, um, let's see, maintainer. Like, the maintainer can update the token contract. That isn't a token-specific permission. I'd like to remove some of those permissions. Currently, it just lists every permission, and some of which don't make any sense, like creator and maintainer. Exactly. And these just really like little drop downs if they're related or something. It could be groups that are typically used most commonly, whatever. Yeah. And that was really interesting. Everything you said right there, it started being garbled up and it paused and it threw all your words to me like in super fast speed. Yeah, I got I just have to figure out okay. what's wrong with my Ethernet. And it was a tenth of a Matic.
Okay. One one hundredth of a matic. Oh, okay. Yeah, even better. Okay, <laughs> so go so back sad. to go back and fill in some data for your token. You can call it something like universally. Well, yeah, well, here's where it's like it almost needs to needs to be thought out now because otherwise we're going to be saddled with some test token we made. So well, well, yeah, I mean, let's at least put a little thought into it. Uh, well, again, it's universally. Or let mentioned. me just update it later. Yeah, we can always change it. Yeah. But currently, let's make it something like universally mintable test. Universally main mintable 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 test. And then, and this is going to fail actually, but we can, we'll, we'll, we'll get it to that point. Um, click on create NFT. It, it should fail and say that you don't have a, a maintainer, to, a configurer token. Okay. So go into the contract code. Because currently it checks for the, 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 the universal super user, the super user for the entire contract. It does not check for the super user for a specific token. So we need to add that check. So source. And then bulk dispersible. Okay. Um, so, yeah, search for is super. Okay, hang on. I gotta read. Um, so go back to wherever you were. Is super? There we go. Line three thirty three. Change it to is super message sender comma zero. Leave the friends and everything. Okay. Line 345, put a new line. Super user equals is super. Open paren user comma zero okay uh close paren semicolon new line close brace <clears throat> copy line 336 through 345 <clears throat> Yeah. Add a new line after 347. One more new line. Yeah, except... So, it should be 353 should be is super address user comma UN 256 to uh, token ID.
Let me think. I think I might be wrong. Hang on. Let's do search for has role. Hang on, yeah, I need to I need to look at search go forward. Keep going. Yeah, hang on. Okay, go back to is super. Line, uh, lowercase token on 353. Line 359. Uh, has role roles dot role super super user comma user comma token ID. Now search for is super. Actually, hang on. We need to we need to make a change real quick. Line three fifty nine. Super user equals open paren new line. Before the double bars, put a new line. Before the semicolon, put a new line. Close per in. Okay. Uh, now search for is super. Okay, hang on. Let me look at this. Okay. Um, this is a little odd, but we can do it. Um, so, line 349... Should be is super tokens dot three forty nine or four thirty nine. I think I'm dyslexic. Four, yeah, four thirty nine. Tokens dot in the parens. Tokens dot in the parens. Entries. Bracket index do the same thing on line four forty four for that is super. Ooh, hang on, I gotta read this. I actually I th I'm, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Um, I guess that's okay. Never mind. Yeah, you can go ahead and put that same thing in the is super on. Uh, for line four forty four, have has roll and put a new line after the open paren. Put a new line before the double bars. Put a new line before the comma. Or no, I'm sorry. Put a new line before the close paren. And then D and Dent. 
Okay, I think that's okay. Search for is super. You, this one's still in red, you know. Oh, go up, go up to the definition of is super. Copy line 336 through 347. Paste it in place. Change it to change address user on 353 to UNT256 token ID. Change user on line 359 to underscore message dot message sender. Underscore message sender, open print, close print. No semicolon, comma, token ID instead of zero. D indent 349 and 362. Okay, go back to search for is super again. Yeah, go on down. Get out of the definitions. And it likes that now. Keep on going down. Okay, hang on. Uh, if so, is super open friend ID? Search for is super. Um, yeah, is super ID again on three on five eighty six? Hang on, go back, go back to that one real quick. Vanilla type is a Okay, yeah, it's it's okay. I just wasn't expecting it to be like that. So, are we on 671? Is super ID again? Huh. Has role burner owner ID or is super owner? Oh, okay. Hang on. Uh, is super owner comma ID on 707? Was owner, called, comma, ID. Here. Owner, comma, ID. One. Owner, comma, ID. Is super. Or, is super. Also. Owner, comma, ID. No, not inside the parens. Yeah. The yep. There things. you go. Owner, comma, ID. Okay. Uh, search on down.
Okay. Um, scroll down so I can see the end of line 784 ends somewhere. I need to see where it ends. Hang on, go back up. Yeah, I needed to see 784. Or, yeah, 784. Um, swap line... 784 and 785. Put is super IDs bracket I. Or not is, yeah, IDs bracket I. IDS bracket I. On line 803, you can remove that is super. And the bars, yeah. Okay, is there another is super in here? That one is fine like it is. So. Look through them one more time. We can. Or run yarn HH colon test. Let's see if we broke it. Oh, run yarn HH colon node in a different window. What are we doing in this one? HH colon Polish. test. Don't appear to have broken it, and that's good. Happy days. Yarn HH de deploy. Okay, hang on. Go to the deploy script.
Yep, there you go. <clears throat> Online. Uh, scroll down. I'm looking for verify colon verify. It's in here somewhere. There it is. <clears throat> so on line 197, put in a new line after the brace. 197. Console.log. Open paren, single quote. Waiting 20 seconds for Polygon Scan to update. Uh, hang on, hang on, wait, 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 wait. Okay, on line 197, add a new line before the, after the open brace. See on line 202 where you have bracket Polygon comma Mumbai includes chain blah, 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 blah. Yeah, go all the way to scan. Just scan. Scan. Yep, cut that. Cut it? Yeah, cut it. Line 198. Const... And these are... What are these? Um, examiner, we'll call it. EXA examiner. Lowercase. Equals. Backtick. Actually remove the backtick and just paste in what you've got. Actually, you need a back tick. So put a back tick after the equal sign. <clears throat> Dollar sign open brace. Close back tick after scan. On line 199, change polygon scan to dollar sign uh, brace examiner. And change the single quotes to back ticks. Lowercase examiner, close brace at the end. Online 202, dollar sign, open brace, examiner, close brace. You're missing a, a your, your brace is in the wrong place on the console log. And you need to close paren at the end of the line. <clears throat> Yeah, line 202. Nope, just examiner. No, you want the dot, dot, dot in the backslash in. You don't want the back tick. No, you don't want, yeah, you don't want that back tick. <laughs> Examiner, close brace, dot, 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 backslash in, back tick. There you go. So, dollar sign, open brace, examiner, close.
close brace. Uh, ellipsis, no back tick. Okay, there you go. Um, now I have to get rid of one of this back tick. There's still red in it. Yeah, that will remove that final close brace. Okay. On line one, after 199, put a new line. A weight space new promise. No, actually, no, hang on, hang on. Oh, yeah, it is. It's new promise. Yeah, you're close. The sp new promise, uppercase promise, new space promise, uppercase promise. Open print, open print. Accept. Garbled up. Accept. Right again. Accept. Close paren rocket. Uh, set timeout. Open paren. Accept. Comma. Uh, 20 times a thousand, 20 star a thousand. Spaces around the star. Let's just, just for prettiness sake, I mean, the way it really should be written, uh, indent 198. Put an open paren after the equal sign. We'll indent it more. Put an open paren after the equal sign. New line. Uh... New line at the end of the line, and then a close paren. A new line. Const timeout equals 20. Uh, replace 20 on line 202. With dollar sign, nope, on line 202, don't, I mean, you can do that. But dollar sign brace timeout instead of 20. And then 20 on the next line with timeout. Just time out. Okay, rerun yarn HH deploy. Do you see, do you know why we did that? I mean, that makes sense. It's the error. If you look at the verification step, it, it says it couldn't find the contract. And so we're giving Yeah, it, we need to we need to wait. We're giving yeah, we're just giving Polygon scan time to catch up. I love it. Right again. I don't know what to do other than just running. I mean, that's uh, I've, there's nothing we can do, really. No, if, if we do, 
No, if we do five in a row, we should go into the hard hat code. And okay. I'm sure it's some factor, okay. some API call I they do. I think there is. And if I it's think, a 1.1. I think you're yeah. right. I think there's a variable that's almost exactly that. It's a multiplier for the, the gas price or gas fee. Yeah. I'm just going to bump it in there. But it looks like it's going through. So we've never had to do it five times because that's what I've said to, told myself. Yeah. Even though it goes pretty fast. Like, if it took five minutes, we for sure would be digging into it. Yeah. And why is the, the gas unknown? Just because you never programmed it in to actually return the value that's actually in no, the No, it's um, supposed to it's logs. supposed to be pulling that from this deployment variable that's that's returned. I don't know if it's not set or I don't know. I, I honestly don't know why that's not working. No, we saw it. Remember we saw it when you when we ran one of our uh, console logs, it was in one of those logs. We could fix we that. If you want to fix it, we can fix it. I don't care. I mean it's kind of well, yeah, it's, it doesn't really matter. It's just it's kind of fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm always curious to know how much this is costing, even though it's usually a penny. Yeah. So, But at these prices, yeah, yeah, at these prices, it doesn't matter. When things were real expensive, it was nice to know. Okay, so that's good. Okay, so what did we do I'll, before we got down this rabbit hole of fixing the polygon timeout? It was... Uh, oh, yeah. We were create, about ready to go to mint one. NFT. And you said something like in here was broken and then we stopped. And I don't know if you, you were like yeah, looking somewhere it wasn't, in here. You said something was it broken. It wasn't. You, you said you gave yourself a super user permission for this token, which should allow you. Oh, that's to, right. To and do it didn't know how to query for that. But we've already up, we've updated that. So maybe it'll work now. I don't know. Hit create NFT and see if it works. No, do create NFT in the browser. Uh, it's not running. Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry, I didn't realize what you were doing. I thought you were going to run a, a task or something. That should not be showing up. Oh, okay. That's that's fine, actually. So what that is, this and these are confusing because of how they're displayed. That is the token to disable the minting permission. And yeah, I can we can add the logic right to to display something saying like disables. And that's also a permission token, right? It, so it, it should is, not be showing up. Yes, it up. shouldn't be showing up, but it is. So click on the the pencil, yeah, next to no URI. And whatever it was called, unlimited minting or unpermissioned, permissionless minting token test. Permissionless minting. No, you test? said it. You you know you called it universal. Universal. Let's call it. Let's call it permissionless. Universally mintable test. Let's call it permissionless minting test or mintable test. Permissionless mintable test. And then, sure. Here we go. Let's see. Uh, 
know, that goes very, very fast. I'm very happy with it. Okay. Okay. Um, let's... There's this for you. It should be here. This is what you were saying. You should be able to tell by... That number two means that it permissions the second token. And it would say all if it was for everything. Got it. Okay, cool. Okay. We should change this, right? Do what? Because this is now. Yeah, we can fix that. Um, Go to... Uh, Um, this is now showing up as the token. Is this a permission token or is this not a permission token? It is, it is a permission token and we can fix that. So let's go. Or into... let's just change the description on it. So if you gave me a description that's different than it says, right? It says it gives that them is the not ability easily to... doable. We would need to be generating a okay. separate metadata file for each one of those. And that's problematic. Because we can't generate Can we a just metadata change the file. Description? We can't generate a meta. The, de the description is in the metadata file, and we can't generate the metadata file from within the token. It has to be done in the web app. So it's not. It's Got it's it. really not easily doable. We can have it in this UI. We can display some additional information in the description, but let's let's just fix it a little bit for right now. So go into okay. Packages, UI, Pages, Home. Source, Pages, Home. Um, scroll down. So... Hang on. On line 82, copy 82 through the end of 82. Yeah, no, just, just the dot thens. Yeah, 82 and the two dot then. And paste it there. Bits library. So 85 should be bits library dot. I think it's disabling type. D-I-S-A-B-L-I-N-G. And then change the then lines to, to match. Okay, you don't have to change that one. You need to change line 87 to disabling. Okay, line... There should be a use state for gating type up above. A use state. Yeah, line 40. Nine, copy forty nine, and do instead of gating type, disabling type. Okay. Search forward for gating. There it is. Scroll down. Scroll the, the bottom of the screen up to the middle. Okay. On line. Copy 113. Actually, hang on, hang on. 
Cut line 116 through 119. And paste it on, on, make line 113, put a new line on 113. Const type equals open paren new line paste in what's there okay hang on hang on so put a closed paren on line 119 And remove line 122, 123, and 124. Make it just type, triple equals gating type. Should be indented. Copy 121 through 123. Const. Disabling. Equals token dot is question mark dot disabling. Dot is question mark. It's just like the token is gating two lines above it. Or three lines above it, yeah. Except disabling instead of gating. And then two question marks open paren. New line. Type triple equals gating type or di a bar disabling type. All caps gating type. It's just like the line 122. Disabling type. And then de-indent those three lines. I think it wants parentheses around gating type or disabling type. Okay, uh, so line 132, put gating, comma, new line, disabling. On line th 134. Hidden, colon, space, open paren, new line. Um, Token.hideable is not equal to false, new line. And, and, gating, space, double, uh, gate, and, and, open paren, gating, 
and and open paren gate no uh, at the begin starting at the beginning of the line and and open paren gating spaces between the ands and the paren no the the initial yeah there you go gating and and open paren gating space bar bar Nope. Yeah, you just need the one gating. So and and open paren gating, bar bar. Disabling. Close paren new line. And and. And then remove the spaces before the bang. End of the line is a... Uh, yeah, after visible is a new line and then a closed paren comma. Okay, now go to token table in packages ui components online scroll up it's way up it's uh, it's almost at the top of the file i think yeah hang on Go back to where you just were, home.tsx. I gotta look at this. Okay, so it's line 127 is what I'm looking at. So gates is equal to so change line 127 to gating space bar Gating space, no, hang on, at the end of the line, at the end of the line. Gating, double bar, disabling. Space. Okay. Now on line, go back to tokens table. Your audio is breaking up. Did you get what Go you wanted here? Go back to tokens table. Yeah, that should be fine. Tokens table. And then line 31. Put a new line after 31. Open brace. Token dot disabling. Space and and open paren. New line. Uh, text tag. Open open paren. Uh, disabled. Close paren. Yeah. Reload the page and see if that token A goes away and B... Oh, it's going to complain about 
the that's a surprise um can't convert big int to number uh right click on token and go to the type definition and on line Oh, it should be. Go back to the tokens table. Change um, line 32 to token dot is dot disabling. Okay. That shouldn't fix that other error, but that's that's better. Um What's the error? Token dot is is undefined. That's fine. The token is hidden is not a problem. Um, I don't think. Uh, go up, go to line 130, or line 32. Make that token is question mark dot disabling. And see if that has an effect. What's the type error? Can't convert big into number. Hang on, does it give a line number? It's in retrieve line. Oh, okay, I know what it is. Go back to home. Go scroll down. Keep going. Line um, 205. Uh, at the end of the line, and, and, disabling type is not equal to null. Add disabling type to the dependency array. Do you know what that means? The dependency yes. array for React hooks is at the end is at the end of the hook. Put a comma after type. Okay. See if that'll run. We might need we might need to add it in one more place. Let's see if it dies. Um just for safety's sake, add disabling type on line 195. Yeah. Yeah, so now it has so number 4 it says disables the minting for number the minting check for number 2. You can read if you know what it means it makes sense. If you don't know what it means it's not going to be abundantly clear but say say it again to me. Number so four. So what are the variations here? If there's nothing, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, the, the fourth token disables the minting check 
for token number two. So if there's a bunch of those, that there will be like this stacked numbers of token three to token nine, token 22. Is that what will happen in this column? Yes. Okay, cool. Well, unless we get it. So, so this potentially could have a whole bunch in this one row. No, that row will only affect okay. one other row. If you wanted to disable a different row, you would create a new token. Okay, explain this one more time to me. And then give me a few variations of it. What will this little area look like? Or will always only have a top number, which of course is the token, uh -huh. a middle number, and a bottom word. Is it ever going to have more in this little area? No. For this one Okay, that, that that was my question. Okay, so this means token number four can be disabled. Um, no, token by... number four disables. Okay, go ahead. Token number four disables token number two. The minting check for token number two because it's a mentor token. Got it. Okay, good. Let's Time to push, right? Commit. Yeah, let's commit. I or think so. Some other things. Yeah. The super user token is working. There's one other thing that isn't working, but let's go ahead and push it. What the other thing? The limiting it to only one, limiting the number of tokens that a particular account can mint. Let's do it. We've got 20 minutes, right? Whatever works for you. Um, go ahead. Well, let's do a... a do you think a, we can get it done in 20 minutes? I think so. Do S and hit enter in, in hyper. Do A A D hit the space bar. This is a lot of it's it's oh it's because we changed that directory so all of the artifacts are moved around. Um really though what we did was Enabled per token super user and correct. Go ahead and hit Q. T enabled per token per dash token super user. I think it's per dash per token. Dash? Is there a dash in there per token? Per dash, no, dash like the dash character. Per token super usering, <laughs> super user. S space backslash and sign. Space moved Space contract artifacts. Okay. So that's good. So now we just need to go into go into the contract. And scroll to the bottom of the file. Okay, hang on. It should be... Scroll up a little bit. Like half a page. There you go. Stop.
copy line 795 through the end of that statement? No, just the just the end of the if statement. The first if statement, yeah. Copy that and paste it right there. Uh, it's if get per user max. is greater than or equal to zero require that the total supply plus amounts bracket a is no it's actually it's not it's not total supply it is change total supply to balance of i think and then it's balance of hang on it's balance of two bracket I balance of two bracket I balance of open paren two bracket I. What does two bracket I mean? The the letter the letters T and O. If you look at the arguments to this function, there is an address called two. Oh, it's actually just two, not two bracket okay, so i. It's two, just two, two comma space ids bracket i. Two comma ids bracket i. Is that what you want? Yeah, there should be a space after the comma. So balance of two comma six brightest bracket I plus amounts bracket I should be less than or equal to get per user max of IDs bracket I. And change line 804 from maximum mint allowance exceeded to uh, uh, maximum per user allowance exceeded. Per space user. You got allowance twice, yeah. Um... That should do it. Um, we still need to set the... Pu good, I hope, because we're pushing the limit again, probably. We'll see. Search for create. Create open paren. Okay. Um, scroll down. Scroll down some more. There you go. Keep going down. Okay, on line six, hang on, yeah, line 601, put a new line after 601, actually, hang on, wait, 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 I'm wrong, it's not the right place to put it, um, put it on, put it on line 597, put it after 597. Set per user max. Open per in. ID. Comma. Space. Uh, one. No, is there a space before the i between id and the comma? No, it has like a little up arrow. Okay, yeah, it's fine. I I couldn't tell. Um, but emit is 
So I need a semicolon, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, one more thing. Go into packages UI. Components. Or source components. Packages UI source components. Set max button. Is there a set max button? Maxform.tsx. So... Uh, Um, I really hate to copy all this and do it over again. It seems like there should be an easier way. Um, we'll try it this way. On line 15, after purpose equals create, comma, do per user. equals false comma uh, after line 17 put a new line per user question mark colon boolean Okay, line uh, line 30. Put a new line before set max. Or copy. Copy line 30. Yeah, and just do on line 30. Put a new line. Before line 30, put a new line. If open per in per user. Close per in open brace. Change the get max on the next line to get per user max. I'm still here. What do I do? Leave these alone? You need to not have a closed brace. This is going to what? Okay, set max. No, hang on. Get max. Get max. Change get max to get per user max. No, leave that alone. Other than indent, indent it. But get max to get per user max. It's per you. I think it's per that user one. max. Get per user max. And then put a new line after that line. Uh, brace, else, brace. Close brace, else, open brace. And then put a new line after the line after it, and then another closed brace. Okay, now... Line... 47. Change const tx equals to let tx new line. I'm let, 48. Line 48. Let tx new line. If 
open paren per user open break goes close friend open brace new line tx equals await oh, then the line that's below it so copy that line uh you paste it in place put an else between the two hold, hold, hold on one second hold on one second this bullock okay Okay, go ahead. Put an else between those two lines. <coughs> so brace it with braces. And then put a close brace after the next after line fifty two. And change the set max on line 50 to set per user max. Okay, we're almost there. Uh, that should be fine. That should all be fine. Scroll on down. Uh, to line... 97 label equals open brace per user question mark actually let's do it this way remove the remove the per user in the question mark or cut it actually cut the per user in the question mark Change the quote to a back tick. After set, put a dollar sign open brace. Set space dollar sign open brace. Paste in per user. Uh, uh, space question mark space. Single quote. Capital per space, capital user. Capital per. Close quote, space colon, space double single quote. P colon, double single quote. Those single quotes. Uh, close brace at the end of the line. Okay, one last thing, and this button should appear. Go into, um, NFT form? I think it's NFT form, maybe. Or it's options form. Try NFT form, actually. See if there's a set max button down at the bottom. Or a max form, it's called. What's the other file it could be in? Uh, options form, maybe? Options form. Okay, copy line 215. Can paste it in place. Uh, add a after blue close quote 
comma or not no comma space per user equals open brace true. No spaces and braces around true. Reload the the token editing form. So go back to the web page and click on number two. Click on the the pencil. What's the error? Okay, that's good to know. Uh, go to NFT form line 311. Do on line 311, have it be image, space, and, and, image instance of file. Image instance of what file. else goes here? Image and then on line three fourteen, put a question mark after image. Okay. Replace needs something. Um, put a paren before image. And put image as string, close paren. Yeah, no, image as string, Ow. close paren. No, no, image as string. Image space as space string. Lowercase string. Close paren after string. Okay, there. I was going to say that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, I think it likes it. Scroll down in the NFT form and see if you can set the per user token limit. Uh, let's change maximum mintable where it says um, uh, go to uh, max form line um, 76 put an open brace uh, per user Lowercase per, no space. No, yeah. Uh, per user space and and. A uh, single quote, capital per space, capital user. Close quote, close brace. So put a number in the per user maximum mintable. We added the setting the default to one after. So hit set per user max now. Let's see if you can set it. Let's 
looks good. Hang on, what's the error there? Oh, okay, that was just as you were changing it. If you reloaded the page, I don't think you'd have those. So scroll down and make sure that it's saved. Okay. Um... Are you ready to head out, or you want to test one last thing? How long do you think it'll take? Like 10 minutes to, to check the minting function. Yeah, let's do it. <clears throat> um, go to... Just try to keep it to that. Try to keep it to that. Okay. Um, Localhost colon whatever the port number is. And then, well, I actually click the click the view button, that little eyeball next to permissionless mintable test, the eyeball. Over yeah. here. Yeah. Now change view in the URL to self dash mint. And this should fail, but hit connect to mint. Actually, yeah, go ahead and hit it. It should, it, well, actually, it will succeed for you, but that's because you're a super user on this token. Go back to the index and see if it minted a token for you. Well, it didn't, though. It didn't, it should have popped up the... Yeah, change it to self dash mint. Yeah, connect. What do you to, want to see here? Connect to mint and then mint. You want me to change my account or no? Uh, yeah, go ahead and change your account. And it should not let you do it if you change your account. Okay, go ahead and set the maximum mint to like 10 or something. Yeah, you gotta switch back to Regency or you can't edit the tokens information. So go back to, no, go ahead, go back to the edit, click on the little octopus, and then click on the, the pencil. The pencil. And now maximum mintable, set that to like 10. No, no, not the per user maximum. The cancel, yeah, don't. The maximum mintable, the line above that. Yeah.
Okay, now go back to the 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 uh, mint page, the self mint page. You have to probably use the back arrow. The back, the actual back button. Or you can go to the view page and change view to self mint, but that that's what we were wanting to see, so that works. So click the go to view for that token. Click the eyeball for that token. And change view to self dash mint. Change accounts. And mint. And then do it one more time after this. Because you set the maximum per user token to two. You actually have to do it three times total so that you can hopefully see an error after the, third, after the second time. Different. So change the account right now. Is that no. what you said? Do it in that order. Change no. my account or submit no. another one from this account. Hang on. Yeah, mint another one from this account. And it. I need to fix that. I'll fix Hit that. The max. It should be. It should be showing a spinner while it's doing the actual minting, but I'll fix that. And now wait for this, wait for that to finish. And mint one more time and hopefully you'll get an error this time. Damn. I was really hoping you'd get an error. Um, hold down control and kick, click, click the little octopus to open up the index. Just to make sure that you've got two. You said do what? Hold down control and click the octopus to open it in a new tab. And look at that token. Yeah, there's two of them. It should be failing now. Um, click that just to see it. Make sure it's two to humanity. Which it should be. Yeah. Well, should I mint a third one and just see what happens? You can try it, yeah. I, I, I was wanting that to fail, but <laughs> it's not. Yeah, do mint a third one because I might just be off by one. Like the basic logic might be working. It's just I need to do strictly less than. So try one more mint. And this is not three of ten, right? These are two different numbers now. Three of the right? ten total have been minted. But I should only be, from this address, only should be able to be minting two yes. of them. Yes, and I don't know why that's not working. I'll fix that. But okay. try to mint one so more I am time. Going... I just try to mint one more time. I want to see if I'm off by one. 
And this is supposed to say self. What is self this? Self mint. Okay, it's not gonna fail. Uh, never okay. mind. There's something wrong with the check. I'm gonna have to fix the check. Okay, yeah. Uh, commit. Yeah, well, we and made push. a lot of progress today. I'd say. <laughs> yeah, we fixed a lot of. It didn't things. feel like one of those days where <laughs> finally with some momentum. Actually, we've always had it. It's some of the tough stuff has been very difficult. Okay, yeah. so achieves and I am now. I'm asking. Yeah. And then and T AA. added per user max form. Okay. That it? I think so. And then push. And if you feel like it, do a UI colon publish. Which this should be faster now that it's using Vite. Should be faster. It still takes a little bit of time. Okay. Is it going to be there right away? It'll take it a second. Wow. Well, all right. Well, I'll check in with you tomorrow. Put up another... Um, yeah, I'll create an event. Event, if you want to... Okay, sounds good. Cool. All See right. you tomorrow. That was a good session. Thanks. Later. See you later.